That's not for me. That's over here. All right. Welcome. Happy Sunday, everybody. Um, I hope you've had a great day so far. Um, I have. I just uh, just got back from church a few minutes ago, had an opportunity to to share with my congregation some thoughts on, uh, uh, you know, how to get yourself prepared for things. Not quite the same message we have here, but a little bit more on the spiritual side of things. But today um, I've got um, Ted again from Ted Speaks with us. And, um, you know, we're I call, I'm calling this an emergency meeting because we've got some yeah. deadlines that are coming up tonight that are important for you guys to be aware of. Um, you know, like everything, what we're going to be talking about today is going to encompass a lot of information. You're, you may even want to go back and watch this again later after you've, um, you've already watched it once. Um, but we're going to be covering a lot of information today. Um, we're going to be talking about what's happening tonight um, with the bank lending program. We're going to be talking a little bit about silver in general, why we think that's a good option for a lot of people as far as getting ready for what's coming. Um, and then we're going to be discussing how much silver do you need? Um, you know, a lot of us are trying to figure out, do we need, you know, 10 ounces, 100 ounces, 1,000 ounces, 10,000 ounces of silver? What, what's going to help you get through uh, what's coming? And then we're going to be talking a little bit more about how do we grow that? How do we accumulate more silver? Um, what kind of form of silver is, is recommended? Um, and, you know, guys, everybody's going to have opinions on this. So we're going to be sharing that. We'll be engaging with you as well to kind of get your thoughts and we'll be talking about that so come with questions as well and the last thing we're going to hit is how do you store this you know where do you how do you keep it safe um you know what do you do with this and uh is there going to be a time that you'll be turning it back in for fiat so we're going to hit on that as well um but my guest here tonight guys if you haven't seen him around um he's starting to make waves so it's perfect to have him come on the stacking surfer channel so that we can serve the silver wave that's coming here guys um, but Ted has over 27 years of experience as a financial planner. Um, he's also been a small business owner that has grown a business to a very large size with um, with printing ribbons. I may not be saying that exactly right, but um, he was involved in that. So that was my first thing when I got out of college. There you go. What happened was uh, the, the, the computer printer ribbons were made and inked in China. Actually, not in China, Japan. OK, and ink needs to be mixed with mineral spirits in order to keep the ink fluid inside the nylon. So what you do is you impregnate the ink, the ink into the nylon. All right. And then as you hammer out the ink onto the paper, it creates a dry spot cause and that causes uh, causes osmosis. OK, so the dry area is sucking in the ink from the outer edges. If the transfer medium, which is the, uh, the mineral spirits are there. But if you're making these things in Japan and you're shipping across the Pacific Ocean in containers. OK, and then you're distributing them throughout the United States in brown UPS trucks. Do you think the ribbons might be dried out by the time they get to the client? Absolutely right. So yeah. I said, hey, why don't we do that? So these guys, they were making these really big ribbons that printed out the uh, the telephone bills a long time ago. So you might be too young to remember this. But a long time ago, when you made uh, long distance telephone calls, every call you had was made was printed out who you called, uh, the duration, the cost for and all that kind of stuff. Well, that was printed out all out with an IBM 3663. And there were big wide band printers. Well, when the new printers, uh, personal printers, personal computers came around, mainly when the uh, Commodore 64. Anybody old enough to remember the Commodore 64? Well, then they really yeah. and then they started coming out with printers, the Okie Data, Diablo and all that. And yeah. they needed uh, ribbons. So um, the guys were making the big ribbons. They said, and I was playing racquetball with them. Say, hey, Ted, um, you've got these little ribbons coming up here of an interest. And in basically, uh, what do you want? They wanted me to uh, take on selling them. So the name of their company was Maryland Custom Ribbon Corporation. And mine, I started was National Computer Ribbons Corporation, small little spare bedroom out of a row house in Baltimore, Baltimore City, and as opposed to paying rent as soon as I got out of college or whatever. So um, at any rate, we grew this thing from zero to 27 million a year in printer ribbon business and uh, sold it at a 38 percent net pre-tax profit margin. How do we do that? We had the subassembly being done uh, by, uh, by, by people that are handicapped. So they did it in their own house. I think this should be about silver, though, folks. But how does that relate did to you, this? Did you have any silver? I'm sorry. Did you did you have any silver come out of that business, or was that later in your life that you found silver? This didn't. The silver thing for me didn't happen until Charlie died in November of 2012, and um, in cleaning out the house because I'm the successor trustee, 
I came across all the silver and God, what in the world? So I'm picking it up as heavy as hell. And um, I had no experience with it whatsoever. And I found the receipts and took it back to the place that he bought it, Golden Eagle Coin in Laurel, Maryland. So I lifted it up on the counter and this uh, this older Italian guy behind the counter says, hey, I haven't seen you in here before it brings you in. And so apparently one of your clients died and has all this silver and I need to turn it back into money and distribute it. So the, the uh, Italian guy behind the counter, he looked at me, there was something about him. He said to me, let me get this straight. You're going to give me this, like hundreds of pounds of silver, okay? And I'm going to give you a piece of paper with ink on it. He said it to me like that. And I'm thinking, this guy knows something that I don't know. And I don't like the fact that anybody knows more than I do about what I choose to know about. And so in November of 2012, I embarked on this journey. And the more I learned, the more I realized I had to unlearn what I spent 27 years learning. That what I've been telling people is money and how to protect their future. It was all about digits. And yeah. there's nothing intrinsically valuable about digits. Okay. So uh, I decided to, to enroll in a uh, Austrian monetary economics course out of MIT <coughs> and used my minor that I got at James Madison as sort of a springboard because you couldn't get into this unless you had at least some kind of degree in economics to get in. Okay. And, um, you know, it was sort of interesting to me when I was a freshman in uh, I think 1976, 77. Um, but things have really taken off. And the more I learned that silver was money and what I told people was money was not, the more I had to be convinced that I wasn't wrong. And the more I researched, the real, I realized I was wrong. And I'm sorry, folks, but there is, this, is, this is an opportunity that you're never going to have another get. This is not, you're never going to have this opportunity ever again. Look, I agree. So this is well, money, folks. OK. Yes. Yeah, so, so real quick. Yeah. Yeah, real real quick before we we jump into that, I just want to let everybody know in the chat we're just we're just warming up real quick. We're going to be getting into some five key topics today um, that we're going to hit with you guys. And um, what I would love to have you do is a lot of you've been oh, starting to watch, <laughs> a lot of you've been starting to watch Ted's videos. Um, I would love to have you put your questions for Ted in the chat. So Comment that we can come back to that, and we can definitely try to start answering those for you guys. Um, I know he's going crazy with emails, trying to answer as many as he can. We love it. We love it. Bring it on, guys. Bring it on. On the on the air, too. So definitely put your comments in. But, but Ted, I think, you know, my, my story's not, it's a little different than that, too. Um, I don't have them with me, but my, my dad started giving me 25-ounce um, vintage silver bars for my birthday, starting in 2019. And I thought they were cool, but I had no idea what they were worth. You know, I knew well, silver, silver isn't in your hair. You got have, blood. there's no silver no gray in your hair. My, my grandma died at 95 with her hair looking just like this. So maybe I'll be lucky. Great. Genius. I don't know. Um, I'm sorry. But uh, basically he gave me these bars. I had no idea what they were worth. And my second birthday, my next birthday comes up in 2020. He gives me another bar and I'm thinking, okay, I don't know what to do with these. I'll just put them in a drawer in my, you know, in my, in my nightstand. Mm -hmm. And by the time the third one comes out, I, I thought, okay, I better figure out what this thing's worth. And, um, you know, I took it to a store, they, they checked it, it's real silver. And, you know, they let me know spot price. And I thought, okay, what the heck spot price? And so I started hearing about the spot price. And um, I started doing a little bit more research. And at that time, I was concerned about, um, you know, inflation potentially coming in with all the money getting printed in 2020 and 2021. Hang on. Um, I started looking at gold. And that's where I, I kind of got my, my start, Ted. But um, what I found out is these vintage bars um, were listed between a thousand and fifteen hundred dollars on eBay, mm -hmm. and what that told me is that there there's different prices that 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 silver has, but there's some real value to this, mm -hmm. and that's kind of what started my stacking journey. I mean, I collected coins when I was a kid. Um, you know, I had I had silver eagles um, in the '80s and stuff too, but even before then, I had half dollars. Um, but it really started to hit me when I saw how much it had grown in value that a $1 coin was now worth, you know, $27. Well, what, it... we've come, what we've come to learn though, it wasn't that the coin grew in value is yeah. that the dollar become, became worth less, right? It took same, it took more units of the same, the watered down dollar 
to get to the same number of calories. We talked about the water and the soup situation as far as uh, you and I going to start a restaurant, right? Have yep. we talked about this last time, a bowl of clam chowder for a buck? Yeah, we did. We did. Yep. But it, but it, but it's the same concept. It's the same thing. So like I have a dime Ooh. here that is a 1963 for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and if I turn it on the side, you'll notice there's no copper. Mm -hmm. Um, it is 90% silver. At least you have you a hard to... surface you can drop it on so everybody might hear what it sounds like. Hard surface, like glass. Uh, yes, my phone. How, let's try this. Let's see if this will work. I'll put it up to the microphone. No, nah, no. Nah, you need a really hard surface. Like, uh, no, I don't. Like, okay, that's all right. <laughs> that's as hard as I've got a surface here. I'm going to drop one for you here. You want to drop one? Yeah, I'll drop one here. You ready? Did you hear that? Yes. Oh, and I've got two quarters here too that are silver as well. And let's see if you can hear this too. Let's see if we can kind of ping test this. Can you guys hear that? Maybe that's too quiet. Here we go. Hear that? That's, hey folks, this is what's known as sound money. This is sound money. Versus this. This is going to be unsound money, okay? Listen to this. All right. Here's the unsound dime. Listen. Oh, does that sound flat? That's real easy to decipher, right? Listen to this one. And listen to this one. Hear the difference? Yeah, there you go. Could you hear it? Ain't technology great. This is wonderful. Listen so again. I got a couple questions for you real quick, Ted, and then we're going to jump into what's coming up tonight. All right. Um, All right. So... Um, here's a question that someone's asking. We'll just address a few of these real fast. Isn't silver too bulky as money? How can millionaires and billionaires uh, buy physical silver? Um, they have all the money. And I know, I know this gentleman, he likes crypto a lot. So, you know, one argument is crypto can be put into a little thumb drive. Um, but let's not address that right now. Let's just look at silver in general. Um, how much can a billionaire convert a billion? Would they need to convert a billion dollars worth of their fiat into silver? Um, can they store it? You know, what would they do if you had someone with a lot of money? If I was a billionaire and um, I had digits on a computer screen or I had uh, shares of stock that used to have uh, security you know, information on it as far as a uh, QCIP number, I would uh, I would probably have 99% of it in physical silver and I would be carefully moving it into um, monster boxes of eagles and I would probably want to corner the market in dimes because the dimes are extremely rare. They're very finite. And I think for one guy to be able to suck up, uh, you know, maybe $400 million of uh, face value of dimes. Wow. That would probably dry it up. And then what will happen is people start to understand, hey, why is everybody doing this? Why, where's the silver? Why can't I? Why, why can't he find any eagles? This is what's going to happen. I'm telling you, <laughs> they're, they're going to nail down. They're going to wipe out everything that isn't nailed down. If there's a silver plated screw, they're going to get that, too. And also, there, the currently you can find silver plate. Now, Williams and Rogers used to make silver plate. It was a very inexpensive yeah. way to have quote unquote silverware. Okay. It's not like uh, Wallace Graham Baroque that I have. I mean, one of these things weighs each fork weighs about an ounce and a half. It's fun. <laughs> yes. Anyway, as far as as far as finding the silver plate, okay, what's going to happen is the value of the silver and the and the and the fact that it's so finite and hard to get, they're actually going to be taking the silver electronically, ele electrically off of the substrate and put it onto a bar. Okay. They're going to remove the silver that was on the silver plate, the spoon or whatever, okay, and put it back onto a bar. I'm telling you, this is what's going to happen. Well, so, so the other thing, too, is uh, right now there's not a lot of silver recycling that goes on with parts in electronics or solar panels or things like that. But mm -hmm. if silver becomes more valuable and more sought after, okay, we're not going to talk dollar values because it doesn't, it's irrelevant at that point. Um they're going to start recycling it. People are going to figure out how to go get it. They're going to figure out how to, to try to pull it out. However, okay. a lot of it gets used up. It's not the same as, um, you know, gold. It's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, and so it can get used up. It can get spent. Um, and you may not be able to recover it quite as easily. Um, well, you're certainly not going to get it back out of the, t of the, he the head of a tomahawk missile. <laughs> sure 
so following I, these things over into Gaza or whatever, you know, good I, I've heard, I think it's a cruise missile. I think the stat I heard was a cruise missile was about a, mo a one monster box worth of silver for the cruise missile. So yeah. that's going to either ionize, right? It's either going to ionize yeah. the silver down to the molecule yep. or it's, you vaporize it, or it's going to basically shoot it all over the place. You'll never really be able to recover it. It's going to be, you know, yeah. specs of it. But, uh -huh. um, but I think that's a pretty cool one to definitely hit on. Um, and then, you know, one other person had a comment here. I think we'll, I think we'll maybe address this one a little bit later, um, but I'll, I'll pull it up here real quick too. And it has to do with the silver, the gold to silver ratio, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, if people are playing the gold to silver ratio right now, we're looking at about 88 ounces of silver to one ounce of gold. Um, you've talked about in the past that we could see things get down to where um, it's the same as what comes out of the ground, which would be seven to one. Mm -hmm. And then we could also potentially seek it down to one to one. And I can't remember the country, but there was a country in the past that actually preferred silver over gold and it had a higher value. I can't, I'm going to have to go look that up. I can't remember that. If anybody remembers which one that is. It might have something to do with the visibility, which is going to be a key thing here. I mean, when you start talking about $30,000 for an ounce of silver, which is an outrageous, what's well, outrageous, the amount of dollars that they created against each ounce of silver. Yeah. So when yeah. I'm telling you that an ounce of silver will be worth north of $30,000, it's not that I'm a, I'm a kook. It's that the government that we've trusted to, be, to our, our currency to has completely led us astray and has robbed us. OK, they stole all the silver out of our money in 1965. You can't get silver coins past 1965. Prior to that, it was 90% silver. It was more of an honest type of way to measure. And you know what kind of rate of inflation we had up until then? About 2%. Now, where did the 2% inflation came from if inflation is solely created by an increase in the money supply? Guess where it came from? Increased mining supply. Okay. But the problem that we're having right now is that it's taking more and more effort to get less and less silver because we already got all the easy stuff. So and it's becoming more expensive to extract it out of the ground as well. And that Probably. metric is called EROI. I'm going to take some notes. It's called Energy Returned on Invested. Okay. Grant Williams, I think, is the guy that came up with that. He's a fabulous speaker, by the way. Very entertaining for a dry subject such as economics, you know. But I, I'm trying to make it fun. Are you having fun? I'm hey, having if you're having fun. fun, you know, send a send a wave or a handshake or number one. Yeah, put a, put, you guys, if you're having fun, put a handshake in there. Um, the other question I want to ask you guys, in addition to the handshakes, let's see if we can blow up the chat with a bunch of handshakes. Um, I want to know, uh, put a one in if you stack silver, okay? So how do I define stacking silver? That means that you're accumulating it, okay? So you may call it investing. You may Still. call it buying, whatever. Mm -hmm. It means that you're starting to accumulate silver and hold on to it. Put a one in if you're doing that. Um, put a two in if you're only doing gold, okay? You're not doing silver. Um, put a three in if you're doing both, okay? And put a four in four uh, a four in if you're not doing any of those, but you're doing crypto. I'd like to kind of kind of see what you guys find in there. Um, you know, I'm finding I there's a lot. Of people. <laughs> What'd you? Say? I said I didn't die. By the way, my hand didn't go up again after you said the uh, the first one. Yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> so, I just want everybody to know that I'm not in some kind of kryptonic state here. Okay. He's still yeah, alive, guys. He's not gone or whatever. So Ted, we're gonna accumulate a whole bunch of numbers here for a minute. Um, yeah. If you guys haven't done so, please hit that thumbs up as well. That's going to wake up the algorithm and, and show more people what's going on today. So, so as we let that marinate for a minute here, um, you know, I'll just remind people if you guys haven't gone to Ted's website um, to go check it out yet, it's tedspeaks.net. Um, you also have his uh, YouTube channel, which we'll put a link in here. If one of the mods could throw a link in here for Ted's channel, it would be great as well. Thanks, everybody. Um, Appreciate it. He's got a very important message for us to share. Um, the other thing I want to do a shout out to is Ron's basement as well. Um, he, one of these days we're going to get him out here to Southern California up on a surfboard. I think that's, that's going to be the challenge I'm going to make to him when I, I, when think I the challenge of getting him to leave. <laughs> he might stay down here. Uh, so yeah. Who wouldn't? We're going to talk to him, but he had a, sh a great show with Ted earlier today. So we we're going to try to build off of that a little bit. So we'll mm -hmm. cover some of the same information, but we're going to go into a few other areas as well mm -hmm. so that you guys can. Um, you know, get more information in a quicker time period as, as well. So um, we do have super chat ability. I don't, if it's not working, that would be weird, but you can definitely leave a super chat. Um, last thing I'll leave out for you guys too, is I have memberships. One of the things that we're going to start doing starting next month is we're going to be looking into bulk buying of silver. Okay. So I don't want to say this too loudly out there, 
Um, I've got a lot of friends that have channels where they're doing um, a lot of auctions or they do other ways of selling metals. Um, this is going to be something that's only exclusive to the members. Memberships start at $2.99 a month. It's not very much money, guys. And the amount of money you're going to be saving on the silver is going to be tremendous. So uh, we'll have different levels of memberships that will give you different discounts, like free shipping to you know steeper mm -hmm. discounts on the on the metals. Um, there's a little bit of money that'll be coming from that back to the channel to help support the growth of the channel. Um, you know, this whole thing is giving back to you guys in the community and it's, it's helping to do that. I've got a great daytime job. It takes care of all of my needs. Plus, some. um, this is really a way for me to help you guys with, um, sharing the knowledge that I have and kind of my experience of, of getting involved in stacking. Um, so we will most likely be, well, we, we will be beating all the online guys unless they have a specific sell and we probably just won't have that item at that moment. Um, but it's going to be great. I've already been talking to Ted about it and trying to work some deals to be able to help some of his, um, friends and colleagues be able to acquire silver at a much lower rate than what they're finding today. Um, and I haven't gotten them the final prices back, but we'll, we'll talk about that after the show, Ted, but, um, we're going to work on doing that too. So. For those of you that want to look at a membership, that's available. Um, you can do that by going to my main channel um, and you'll see the link that says join. If you're on a PC, it might show it right below here. Um, you can also do a super chat unless, um, actually, let me make sure I have that turned on. If you guys want to do that, that always helps the community. So Ted, kind of leading off of that then, what I would love to do um, is, is kind of talk about what's happening tonight at midnight Eastern. And what might this next week look like? Now, what I want to throw out to everybody is we don't have a crystal ball. Um, we aren't profits. Um, we're going off of what is. But we are students of history. Can I interject that? Yeah. yeah. No, so I'm not a profit, but I yeah. am a student of history. OK. And what I found is that history repeats. And it's pretty daggone close. It certainly rhymes a whole lot. So although we may not have the exact date and the time. My team and I, we've not missed. We have identified every step along the way that has already happened in advance. We have a very good idea of what the steps are beyond this. We don't know. Once, once the big event happens, we have a pretty good idea how quickly everything will go. But we don't know when that big event will be. And that's what's called a black swan. Are you, yep. are, is your audience familiar with what's called a black swan is a financial event that uh, this sort of come out. We don't get into too heavy on them, but it, a black swan would be what happened in 2020. That was around, um, you know, having a virus, right? That whole thing was a black swan. No one saw it coming and it affected the financial markets pretty heavily. Yes. And typically in this particular case, there are scores of these things circling and one, one black swan lands it's going to pave the way for all the others to land and it, they're going to land very quickly and all in short order. And I'm telling you what's happening. I mean, geez, you imagine dead and Kate in 11 and a half years of your life to this. And then finally come to the, to the peak moment to reach out to Jared and say, Hey, we better get on the air. This bank term funding program ends. It's, well, why is that all that important? Holy cow, man. The whole banking system stays afloat because yeah. of new loans it's creating, not the old loans so much. They're already sold off. You got to bring new money in so they can fractionalize it and turn it into a hundred to one. Well, not quite a hundred to one. Definitely, if the reserve liquidity ratio is one point six seven percent, that means that one point six eight percent of the people come back to get their money. It isn't there. They've already taken that ninety eight point three three percent, and it's out in the stock market. And you're seeing that in higher values. So, right? Ted, let's slow down for just a second there. So, just to kind of reiterate that, guys. So, um, I, I've got a. I've got a dollar here right now. This is not one that I would actually put into the bank because this is a silver certificate. They're not. Can we go over it. why is it why is it called a dollar? How did it get? How did it first become known as a dollar? It you came, tell us. Ted. It became known as a dollar because the original word was thaler. T h a l e r. It's a German word. But try holding that with your tongue. <laughs> Something like that it won't work very well. So we bastardized it from thaler to dollar, and that's how it became known as the dollar. OK, so go ahead. There you go. So this uh, this one I, I took from my grandma's house when I was a little kid. It's a um, what did I say? 1957. It was totally crinkled. I've I've had it pressed for about 30 years. Uh, so what actually, that is, that's a representation. That's a representation of silver, folks. So the deal is back in 1957, a year before I was born. There you go. Look at this. 
I can't see that so much. Anyway, the year before I was born, you, you could take your silver in and get that note from them saying that they owed you the silver back. So it's a debt instrument, right? Okay. So my question to be to you would be, if your grandmother had that note and she gave it to you, can you go back and get the silver from the bank? She gave it to him, right? Is she going to get this? Then what? I'm, I'm lost. Why are you trusting the banks with your money? If here's a clear example, you're not going to get the silver back from in the first place. Folks, we got to break out of this normalcy bias. This is the place you should be. Okay. This is the calm before the storm. Okay. There's a storm coming and nothing can stop what is coming. Nothing can stop what is coming. And I'm pretty sure that we're going to find out we're right in the middle of the storm. We'll probably hear officially very soon. My fellow Americans, the storm is upon us. And when that happens, buddy, it, it it's it's game over. It's going to be the music ends at that point. There'll be yep. 323 two people, 323 people whose butts are going to hit the ground. One person's going to have a chair. OK, so if you buy three hundred and twenty three paper ounces of silver, according to the U.S. debt clock, if you want to put that up, I'll prove it to them. OK, then you're a guaranteed or you're assured to own at least one ounce of silver. So think of the metrics there. Paper is being sold very cheaply, right? So if you want to buy silver as inexpensively as possible, holy cow, just buy it. Buy the paper version of it. 323 to one other people do. But to your point, when, when you know, we were talking about a billionaire a minute ago here, if a billionaire wanted to go buy um, constitutional silver, I've got a baggie of it here, guys. Call if me. If he wanted I'll to go you. buy this and he wanted to buy a billion dollars worth of it, okay, even at, let's say, $18 per face value, okay? Um, he's not going to find it. It doesn't exist. He's going to well, run out of silver. He, we, I know he'll find it. It'll, he'll take everything that's available out there, and he's going to move on to the next thing. He's going to move on to eagles, and then all of a sudden you start running out of eagles, yep. and then you start running out of rounds. You start running out of bars, okay? And yep. let's, let's say Elon Musk took his entire $250 billion and wanted to convert it over to silver instantly. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's enough around there. Now, Eventually, it's going to start you driving. You create the digits on a, com on a computer screen, but that doesn't mean that there's silver to back it up. You can but actually I'll create the digits on a computer screen and only have one-tenth of the amount you create actually as currency for the people of your country to use. For sure. And then the people that have the paper stuff, once they realize mm -hmm. someone's buying up all the physical, mm -hmm. they're going to eventually realize the paper isn't going to be worth anything. So you'll have that issue. So. Mm -hmm. When we go back to fractional re reserve lending, if this was just a regular dollar, okay, and I put this in the bank, um, the bank's able to take 90% of this and lend it out. And that can be in the form of a loan to, to me, it could be to Ted, it could be to any of you that are that are getting a car or a house or a business or whatever you're doing. Or could it be that it's simply put in the M2 money supply for somebody else to use? Is that possible? I don't Is know. Tell me. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that, that gets to be a little conspiratorial, but you know what? I, I, I think that what you need to do is think about some of the most wildish, outlandish things that could possibly be done with our money and with our land and with our houses and with our economy. And George Bush is quoted as saying is if they ever found out what we did, they'd chase them down in the streets and hang them. Remember that comment? I'm trying to yep. find the, the quote of it somewhere. But um, uh, it's all right. Okay. So at any rate, he had made a comment about this, and uh, he said, if the public ever found out what we did. So a couple of things. I'm going to drop a truth bomb on every one of these uh, podcasts I do from here on out. <laughs> so I'd like you to check your deed and see if you see the word land in your deed. That's all we're going to talk about. See if the word land is in your deed for property. Go ahead. Okay, Let's finish Look talking about silver here. Look that up. Okay, so. So 90% gets taken out, that 10% that's left, they're able to take about 8% of that and put it in bonds, guys. Um, and we're gonna, that's, this is going to lead us into the conversation. We're going to talk about what happens on the 11th here, right? What happens tonight at midnight. Um, so what Ted was talking about earlier is we're really looking at less than 2% that's reserved in actual cash. And so if we end up having more than 2% of the people show up to the bank, and ask for their money back that they put in right now. It's not money. They're fiat. They're, they're, they're script, right? They ask for 2% of their script back. It's going to do what's called a run on the bank. The bank's going to have to shut its doors and the bank basically goes into receivership into the federal reserve. I know about this because that happened to my family's bank. It was ugly guys. It was really ugly. I remember the day my dad called up and said, Hey, we basically will find out in the next hour if we are out of a business or not. Mm -hmm. And uh, my family, didn't diversify enough. So we took a massive hit there. But um, 
I, I know all too well about that without going into too many details of it. But here's the deal. Um, we're at, we're at a point right now where we have had a loan, and I'm going to tr transition this over to Ted, but we've had a loan that's basically been in place by the Federal Reserve to shore up the banks. And maybe just a little bit more context on that, it, Ted, that I think we should hit is what happens when you have a bond that's worth 1% coupon rate, and all of a sudden interest rates go up to where the new bonds are worth 5% on their coupon rate. What happens, Ted? Well, a, a couple of factors will play into that, the duration of the bond. So the longer the duration, the greater the uh, the volatility. So if you if you think about uh, uh, the duration of your bond being a long line, okay? So if you have a short little two-year line, okay, it's that big. And we're going to put a fulcrum in the center, okay? All right? So as interest rates go down, the value of the bonds go up, all right? And that's what's been happening. So the the banks, if you the banks required that small and regional and mid-sized banks invest a large percentage, up to 65% of their portfolio in CREs, which is commercial real, real estate in, uh, investments, okay? Commercial real estate. And what happened was the interest rates kept coming down. Now, if you are in the commercial real estate business, you're not looking to pay it off. You're looking to get income out of it so you can send your kids to college, put food on your plate, buy nice cars, and that kind of stuff. So they're constantly maxing out the amount of money they can pull out of the building because they're not like trying to pay it off. It's a business expense. All right. So now as the interest rates are going up, OK, the value of the bonds are coming down. Now, as the value of the bonds are coming down, the interest rates are going up. That has a stall effect on the economy. OK, the higher the interest rates, the, the fewer the people that can afford it. So who can afford whatever interest rate that's put out there? It's the government. They can print their own money. So the longer the duration of the bond, so they think of it like this. Think of the think of the distance from if the fulcrum is here, think how much uh, volatility there is. But in the other hand, if, if it's like this, look at this. We don't have very much volatility because the duration of the bond is very short. OK, yep. so the longer the duration, the more volatile and the the direction of the interest rates plays into it as well. The interest rates are going down. The value of the bonds going up. The value of the bonds going up. Guess what? The value of the property is going up, right? Okay. So then they go out and they take more loans out against the bank. So now it's hyper leveraged, right? But now what's happened is we can't go to ZERP, which is zero interest rate program. And we can't really go to NERP because we are that's uh, net as uh, net zero interest rate program. They just zero. Okay. So because we're the world reserve currency, we can't have it that cheap. All right. Other currencies around the world can go that cheap, but not the, not the, the, uh, the United States dollar because of its reserve uh, currency uh, status, all right? So the lowest we could get down is like 0.5% or some 0.1%. But now the interest rates are coming up. So as the interest rates are coming up, it's a double whammy because now what's happening is these interest these these bonds are not for 30 years that are on commercial property. Sometimes three or four years, you got to put a lot of your own money into it. But bottom line is there's so much levered against it that the the swing in the interest rates is really affecting the profitability of the whole office sector. So during COVID, what happened? Companies found out that they didn't need to put all their this high priced real estate, uh, have put all their employees in this high priced real estate, keep them at home, pay for a computer, and let them work out of their house. It's great, cuts it down. Now who's going to want to go back in and start renting office space again? Uh, not first... me. <laughs> I'm I'm yeah. working out of my house now. Like seriously. My company's having a hard time getting people to go back in. I work for a software company and people just are not showing up. And if there's a dedicated room in your house, it's just for your business. Isn't that then a tax write off? Yes, uh, it is for me. Yes, it is. OK. Yep. And let's suppose um, you uh, you do some lawn treatment outside. Can you read and you're only using, say, 15 percent of your house? Does that mean you can only write off 15 percent of the lawn treatment? No, you can take all the lawn treatment off because people might be coming to your house or whatever. There's all kinds of tricks. Somebody was posting, geez, I wish Ted would talk about new stuff because I'm really tired of the old stuff. <laughs> We've only been doing this for eight days. Oh, come on. There's well, 20 Ted, we'll have to do that because I probably am not maximizing my um, my my write-offs. And, you know, the funny thing is people say pay your fair share of taxes. Well, what's fair? You guys, the, the, the tax code was written a certain way. So if you're following the tax code legally, um, and you're taking advantage of it, that is your fair share. You're Let me ask you a question, account. though. Jared, if you had to do all your work, all 12 months of work in like five months, okay, in order to get the taxes done, because aren't the taxes done by April 15th? And don't you get the information in by January 1st? 
or second of the first week. If you had to do all your work, a whole year's work in four months, is it possible that you might make a mistake? Yes. Yeah. Is it possible you might glance over some some uh, some some uh, some deductions that are missed? So what oh. happened to me was I decided one year because I got whacked pretty heavy with taxes and I turned it over to Irv and to Jim. Irv the CPA and Jim was a um, he was a CPA too. And so when when Irv came into the office, he said, let me do your taxes. And Jim got upset and said, I'm doing your taxes. I said, I'll tell you what, don't you go go through the taxes. I'll pay each your fee. That was the smartest thing I ever did. I got back a $48,000 tax refund, which the federal tax refund, which then keyed into a state refund, all for $1,800 to do the tax return twice. Not a bad deal, huh? So the thing is, yeah, is that if you gave your tax return to five different CPAs, how many tax liabilities do you think you come back with? Five, because it's a very interpretive type of science, the, the amount of taxes you have to pay. A lot of different ways to consider it, okay? So Irv in our office, he actually worked at the IRS training center in Colorado and helped to write some of this com computer software program. So you know exactly how far up you can take any one of your metrics of your uh, of your of your tax refund in terms of how far you can push it for deductions and everything. Irv is probably one of the top guys in the country I've ever come across. He was in our office for 15 years. Irv Sharp. Yeah, we'll have to. We'll, we'll, my we'll point is, is that is that they're a good, better, and best. Okay. Yep. And it, it, once in a while, one year, you just might want to try and check out, have two CPAs do it and see what comes up. It's worth it. I think, I think, yeah, I, you guys, I, I can't give you tax, tax advice on here either. But what I'll tell you is it does, you get what you pay for um, most of the time. Sometimes you'll pay a lot for something that's not great. But I, I think Ted's advice of, uh, you know, talking to a few different CPAs is probably a good idea, as well as having them compete for your business sounds like a great idea. So Ted, going back real quick, what's happening tonight at midnight Eastern? Okay. The bank term funding program, let me just, let's talk about what it actually is. A bank term funding program is a strategic initiative undertaken by a financial institution to manage its long-term funding needs efficiently. In essence, it involves the issuance of bonds or other debt securities with specific maturity dates to raise capital from investors. My question is, who are these investors are going to buy the bonds? China's out, Japan's out, the world's in an economic uh, uh, crunch right now. Who's going to put money out and give it to the United States so we can go then turn around and, according to Joe Biden, send it in missiles over to, to, uh, to Gaza? I mean, who wants to be doing that stuff? So I think the majority of us, we've lost our confidence in the government itself. So this bank term funding program ends tomorrow. They cannot make any more loans. Now, if they're not making any Is more there, loans, and we just talked there, about Go Ted, ahead. is there any chance that they can extend that program? Well, there is some talk about something called a commercial real estate assistance program. And, um, you know, I looked at the acronyms and it looks like crap to me. <laughs> you get it? Commercial right. real estate assistance program, C-R-A-P. <laughs> anyway, it's all a joke, folks. You got to take it for what it is. We're living in a Potemkin village and we're watching a Kabuki theater. It's the only thing that's real is if you're smart enough, get the heck out of digits and get into real silver. I mean, it's not that hard. It's a very yeah. easy solution. So, so let's simple, say we, we wake up in the morning tomorrow because I'm, I'm on the Pacific coast, right? So I'll probably be in bed before this thing hits. I wake up tomorrow. I look at the stock market. I've got stocks. I've got, you know, I've got crazy. real estate, other things that are out there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what I, we hear a lot of talk about a cyber attack coming. That's something that's been talked about in Congress all over the place. It's been talked by a lot of billionaires. We've also heard the com comments of a black swan coming. Um, you've got some very big institutions that have been talking about, hey, there could be something that hits banks, something that hits electricity, other stuff like that. Um, what, what can happen tomorrow, is that a black swan event? Is it is it a potential where we could have banks starting to lose their liquidity and have problems? Or is this something that we just need to be kind of watching for? Oh, no, no, no. Uh -uh. First of all, it's not a black swan event because we know it's coming. OK. Yep. All right. So what we don't know is what the ramifications are of this black swan event. OK. There's an old saying. It goes like this. I think it, uh, you can ignore reality, but you cannot ignore the consequences of ignoring reality. So you've made all this money real cheap and you've brought tomorrow's demand into today. So you've already satiated the demand that would occur, say, five years from now. Oh, my. So what is going to have to happen in order for that demand to rekindle itself? 
Well, we got to burn through the five years we already stole from the future, right? So there's no way that we as a country, we as a globe can deal with this. The whole problem was created and orchestrated through Keynesian economics. And Keynesian economics is represented by the Bank for International Settlements, which owns all the banks throughout the world. And the only kind of currency they provide is fiat currency, the money they hold themselves, which gives them the right to create the currency, right? So yeah. if they're holding all the gold, okay, he gets to make all the rules, right? So um, for uh, sure. So just real quick for those that may not know, what is this called versus this? So what is this? Looks like it's called a certificate. Okay. okay. So that's uh -huh. a certificate versus real this. money as defined in the Constitution. A dollar is defined in the Constitution as 371.25 grains of silver. Interesting, huh? And it's also defined in the Constitution as gold and silver minted by our treasury. So anything that wasn't minted by our treasury, like the current Federal Reserve note, it's time for that to go, as well as all those liabilities and all the chains and shackles of debt and all the, inf the influence peddling. I mean, if you can control the money of a, of a country, the currency of a country, yep. you can control the, the direction it goes in. Matter of fact, Lord Amsher Rothschild once was quoted as having said, give me control of a nation's country and I care not what laws it makes. So there's an interesting story um, about how um, Lord Rothschild created a rumor on the New York Stock Exchange just at the Battle of Waterloo was occurring over there in, in Europe. And he created the, this, uh, he, he said that uh, he got this homing pigeon and opened up the little message on the homing pigeon. And guess what? Napoleon had broken through the lines at Waterloo. So now they're rushing into, the, into London, okay? And what do you think all the London traders are going to want to do, thinking that, that Napoleon Bonaparte is marching into the city of London? What do you think they want to do with their stock shares? They wanted to sell it, okay? So the price kept coming down and coming down and coming down. And then Rothschild started buying. He was the buyer of last resort. He bought so much that he reached out to his other four brothers that had set up other central banks around the world, not to the extent that they've done right now. If you go to the BIS.org, you'll see 207 countries that they're creating the currencies in. So the, yeah. the brothers all sent the money back to this guy, this brother, who was then buying up all the stock in London. Then what happened after he got all the stock that he could and all the, the, the floors all covered with paper and a lot of the brokers are starting to walk out of the tour, and he announces that no. Apparently, Napoleon did not break through the lines at Waterloo. He was held back. Go figure, right? <laughs> so no. guess what? The investors then wanted to buy their stocks back from Lord Rothschild, but guess what? He wouldn't sell it back to him. So the power was transferred because of a lie. Because of a lie, let's get back in the truth. This is God's money, folks. Judas was paid 30 pieces of silver to drop the dime on Jesus. You did a sermon today. I mean, gold and silver has been in the Bible for, it's, it's mentioned in the Bible or six or 700 times. You can't it get is. any more immutable and permanent and beautiful than that. And that's what I look at too, is uh, as a religious person and it's real, it's physical, I can hold it. I mean, you know, we've got a few folks on here that are, um, that I've been in chats with before and I love that they stuff. love their crypto guys. They love their crypto, but here's the deal. You can't hold crypto like this. Okay. Um, also, there's a unique identifier with each and every one of those things, because if you take an electron microscope and you look at that, every one of those coins, everyone is different. Like every snowflake is different. Yep. You have no unique identifier with crypto. Let's suppose there's supposed to be a, a million crypto created. Then which one of those million do you own? At least get some kind of receipt or something saying Bitcoin number 3,492 and you, owe one, you own one half of it or whatever percentage it would be. But I would be more of a fan of buying crypto if I knew which crypto unit I was being sold and what percentage of it that I own. And I was assured that the, that the supply of the crypto was in fact finite. But people lie. We're finding out about that. Yep. So if, in fact, the issuance of crypto is ad infinitum because no one has any proof to show that they only have no one has a crypto coin above one million. If the, if the number was a million, we got to keep it honest. Look, there, money is designed to have fun with. OK, but the problem right now is you're not investing money. OK, you're investing proxies for the dollar and there's not even enough dollars to be redeemed against the proxies that are out there. 
There's $629 trillion, actually $655 trillion. If you take a look at the U.S. debt clock, you add the total U.S. debt and the current all the proxies for the U.S. dollar, it's $655 trillion, of which is only $20 trillion in the, in the M2 checking account in order to cover those all, all those extra checks. So when the music stops because the M2 is out, I wonder why that would happen, because maybe no more loans. How long so, is that going to take? I don't see the thing melting down and going coming to a complete crash tomorrow. I see the crash beginning tomorrow and stretching out possibly into Wednesday. By Thursday and Friday, if it's still cobbled together that, that time, I, um, well, actually in Friday, March 15th, the Ides of March. Oh, crap. <laughs> is, it, is it? You know, the Ides of March. I mean, for those of yeah. you that don't know anything about the Ides of March, it's when uh, when Julius Caesar was um, was was assassinated. It wasn't that the 15th of March. OK, but anyway, the bo bottom line is big political changes are historically scheduled for the Ides of March. And today is what, the 10th? So five days from now was put as a Friday. Is that right? Mm -hmm. What a great time for the bank, for the uh, the bank of governors of the Federal Reserve Bank. So, you know what? We've got a problem. We're going to have to shut the banks down on, on Monday. And that's exactly what the plan is. I had I was able to view and listen to a recording that was taken inside of a Federal Reserve Bank meeting. And they were talking about how they can't let the public know just how uh, unstable the banking system is because they'd all exit. So at any rate, what I'm suggesting that you do is you exit stage left now. Get out of the Kabuki Theater. Get out of the Potemkin Village. Go go hide behind a rock until all this is over. You won't have to hide very long. It's not going to take very long for all this to happen. But if you don't have it, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. And if you don't own it, somebody else does. And guess who that is? It's us. And Pardon so, Ted, going, going back to it. So um, your, your idea and thoughts of what could happen this Friday, we don't know exactly the timing. We don't know everything perfectly. We do know that the, the loan program ends at midnight. Um, you know, we know bankers can be very resilient. Five and hours and 10 minutes from now it ends. Let's bring but a little reality. It's going to fold and they're not going to be able to keep holding this thing up anymore. Um, you know, I, I, I kept seeing the news the last couple months where people were talking about the Fed's going to lower the rates. They're going to lower the rates. They're going to lower the rates. And I'm looking at going to, to the store and my prices keep going up. I'm like, inflation has not gone down yet. It's still going up. Why would they lower the rates? And, you know, one of the things I've argued is there could be a possibility of them even raising rates higher. I don't know if they'll do that, but I don't see them lowering the rates until there's a reason to have to do it or things start to break. Okay. If, um, they, rate, if they raise the rates, they protect the dollar. Okay. They but protect the, banks, the dollar. And but the banks go down and do all types of rioting and everything. Yep. Okay. If they lower the rates, okay, it kills the dollar, but saves the real estate. You know what I would do? I'd kill the dollar and come back another day. But yeah. um, I'm not going to do that. I'm not in that camp. I don't want to do that. That's not what I'm interested in. I'm 65. All I wanted to do was uh, clear my conscience. See, in the Bible, it says that if you know the trouble is about to beset your friend and you don't tell them, then their blood is on your hands. But if you tell them and they do nothing, their blood's on their hands. My conscience is clear. Heck, there's nothing more I can do. I spent ten thousand dollars just in setting up the uh, the YouTube thing and uh, the email and all these other Facebook and Twitter and all this stuff to get the word out. And uh, our wells are coming a little dry right now. That that was all burned through in like eight or nine days. Talking to Nick, I mean, uh, Nick is the uh, is um, the media guy that takes care of this. He saw the first video that we did. And said, oh my gosh, Ted. You're blowing the channel up. I said, what do you mean? He said, yeah. you ever done this before? I said, no. So it turns out we are up to like almost 90,000 views, thanks to you, of people hearing this message. 90,000 views. And the number of hours can be calculated because you two has all that. That's a lot of classroom instruction you guys are getting. So what I'd like to do is bring it up to the next level and get me a board in here that I can do some math problems and show you how things work. And then when this reset right. is over with, we'll start talking about revocable living trust and estate planning, which has been my passion for 27 years. But right now, if you don't do what you need to do, you're not going to have an estate to plan. You got to no. come out of this with assets. That is true. And just a comment here from one of my friends, Azure Blue, here just to make. Um, no one is killing the dollar. So really. here, here, here's the dollar I, well, there, there's a different definition just to kind of clarify. So um you know, the dollar could be, you, you, it, $1 could buy you, um, uh, you know, $1,000 could buy you a Coca-Cola or a million dollars could buy you a Coca-Cola and the dollar's still around. It's dying. 
it's not necessarily killed. We still may always call, call our script a dollar, mm -hmm. technically speaking out there, guys. But here's the deal. Um, you know, I remember as a kid, I could go buy a Snickers bar for 25 cents. Now, you, Ted, might be able to remember it being a little bit less than that. But I remember it being 25 cents. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> All right. We're going to go here, huh? <laughs> so, I remember it being 25 cents, though. That's the that's the lowest price I remember it ever being. And um, and then I, you know, I look at it now and I go and it's two dollars to buy the same item. Right. Is that because the item is worth more. No, the money has dried up. The well, Not the money hasn't dried up. The money has debased. Because, the money is know, let's just let's just use it in the simplest terms possible. What the Coke hasn't gone is that that's not become worth more. Oh, it's probably the smaller. It's become too. worth less. Yes. Okay? The dollar's becoming worth less and less and less until it's finally worthless. And now we know it's down to 3% because if you take the $20 trillion that's in the account, the M2 money supply, and you divide that by the liabilities against it with the $655 trillion, my goodness, what are you like, um, point, one point some percent? I mean, uh, here, can you do the math on that while I'm here? Okay, so what we do is we take, <laughs> anyway, we'll move on to something else. So, let, so let's hit a few other things because I know we've got, we've got, um, right now we've got about 40 more minutes to go on our live stream here um, for today. When are you going to let the cat out of the bag? When are you going to let me run? Come on now. This is going to run. We're <laughs> going to we're gonna get there eventually. But our second topic we wanted to hit was silver. Okay. We've been hitting that kind of interchangeably with, with the bank, um, the bank loans going up are, are expiring this tonight. Um, Ted, why uh, you, you've already alluded to it to a degree here, but you know, why, um, why silver over gold? Well, the mining ratios and the paper ratios. So currently the paper ratio would be calculated by taking the current paper price of silver, which is what, $24 in some cents, and divide that into the paper price of gold, which is, uh, <laughs> see, this is why I need a board up here so I can do the math to actually show you what the results are, okay? So you got the current price of sil of gold at 2140, say, and you got the paper price at 2340. That's gonna come out to around 88, 89 to one, okay? Which means it would take 88 or 89, American silver eagles to get you one American gold eagle. Okay. So that, okay, it's fine. But where do we, how do we, how do we reference this? Well, let's take a look at what the mining ratios have been. Originally they were claimed as being 12 to one, but actually I think that the original mining ratio was 16 to one or actually 12 to one, but they bumped it up to 16 to one to offset the amount of effort that it took to get it out of the bottom of the mines. So if something isn't worth more, it takes more energy returned on invested, E-R-O-I. Remember I was talking about that earlier? Okay. So if the if it's coming out of the ground at seven to one, Mother Nature's, Mother Nature's true um, ratio, and the paper ratio is 88 to one, then they've mispriced silver by, goodness, uh, by a factor over 10. So what I'm saying is that, and it actually gets better than that. Because of the 7% or the seven units that come out of the ground relative to gold, 60% of the seven units is consumed by in industry. So that only leaves a reciprocal, which is 40% left over. 1640 is 100. So we take the 60% away for in industrial use. You're left with a reciprocal of 40%. 40% 40 of seven is 2.8% or 2.8 units. So it should be three to one, okay? And if you take silver, excuse me, gold at 2100 and you divide it by three or $700. So the current ratio, according to the screwed up uh, pricing that they have, the current mining ratio, mother's nature ratio, ratio should be $700 for silver and $2,100 for gold. So what I'm saying yep. is that as the, gold, <laughs> the silver supplies dry up, it's going to cause a, a um, uh, what Bernanke referred to once as irrational exuberance. People are going to build, bid up and go over what the cost of gold is because they got to have the silver. And it's that point in time that I'm up around one o'clock in the morning watching the overseas markets because I'm going to time this thing perfectly. Okay. When so let's gold stop there and silver go one to one. We're doing a swap. <clears throat> so let, let's talk there for a second, real quick. So, because um, I think everything you hit is important there. Um, the, the time I've been, I, I've been more heavily stacking, let's just say since about 2021. Okay. Middle of the year. That's when I really started doing it. Mm -hmm. um, my silver has not really performed for me. Um, you know, the premiums have been a little higher on the silver. And so I'm pretty flat. Meaning if I, for the silver I purchased, if I were to turn around and sell it right now, I'm going to be fairly close to break even. Can I interrupt you here? Yes. What's happening? Okay. 
is your rocket ship, okay, is getting filled up with fuel. Okay, yeah. it's already got fuel. Oh, in this it. is where I want to go with this. So just um, let me finish for one second. So my gold has done more performing, but it's also just hit an all-time high. So my I've seen my gold investment go up. I've seen my silver kind of stay flat. Now, everything you've just described to us is not current state. It's potentially future state, right? Right now we're sitting at 88. No, it's a reality state. No, no, no. It's not a future state. It's okay. reality state. So What's happening? We're, we're, not living, we're not living in the real world. So the reality is skewed right now and yes. we'll get reset to what it should be is what you're saying. Right, right. right. So go through that rocket with us right now. So right now right. I can buy silver below the all-time high. Mm -hmm. If I want to buy gold, I'm going to be paying all-time highs for it right now. But the mining ratios are out of whack. So let's just dismiss yep. gold for the time being, okay? Until the mining ratios come back and in, in, in sync with each other as, re as uh, represented by the pricing, I'd stay away from gold for the time being. What I'd be doing is concentrating on silver and I'd be concentrating on silver as the coin of the realm. So listen, you were talking about how silver hasn't done anything for you, all right? Yep. This, this, this event we're having right now is the blow up of, uh, it's 170 years of price manipulation coming to an end. Because what happened was in 1871, we got taken off the bimetals, uh, taken off the silver standard. So you got this rocket ship that's sitting on the launch pad ready to go. And you know what? This purchasing power is getting put in and put in and put in. Although we got a problem because the tanks aren't reading that it's three quarters full. It's only reading that it's an eighth tank full. <laughs> but in terms of in terms of what the reality is, okay, the 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 the, the meter or the the scale is saying it's still only one eighth full. But you know what? We have this rocket ship on a on a scale. We have to know how much this rocket ship is going to weigh before it goes up in the air. So those two things have got to sync with one another. You just don't have one metric and, and and say, okay, that's what we're going with. No, you have other metrics to check to test it against something uh, to check it against something else. All right. So you're complaining right now and rightfully so I'm in more, I'm way more impatient than you are. Okay. <laughs> so you got this purchasing power because your rocket ship is here and it's loaded with silver. What's happening is the purchasing power is not finished being transferred into it at this point. Remember, you know, when you want, watch a rocket, you see the sort of steam coming off the side or vapor or whatever. <sighs> I'm what do you think they're still doing? They're pumping it into, they're pumping the liquid nitrogen, which is your purchasing power, your silver, into the rocket ship, okay? And then right at the very end, I got to, what's the last, what are the last lines that come off the rocket ship? The fuel lines, Poof, they come off because as soon as they come off, it's burning like crazy, right? That's where we are. You have to be just I a little bit so. more patient. I'm not wrong. I'm early, okay? And I've <laughs> always been early and I apologize for that. I'm early. 11 and a half years early, as far as I'm concerned, but I would rather be 11 and a half years early than even one day too late. It took a hell of a lot of time. I agree with that. I had. So good to go back to some of your numbers as well, too, um, for the crypto folks out there that are looking at this. Um, right now, you know, you hear the people really loving crypto, the ones that bought it really early and they're trying to get more people in it. As far as I'm concerned, it's a tulip craze. Um, well, it's a love. A love is an emotion. Okay. We have to talk sure. logic here. I'm sorry. Very much I it. love this. Oh, you know, there's plenty of time to go love on everything else once your bank account is filled with silver. Okay. So that before we get to that, though, like what I'm looking at here just as a number that I'm pulling up and looking at my calculator over here. Um, right now, if you don't own any Bitcoin and you go to buy Bitcoin, you know, the highest numbers I'm hearing people talk about is maybe a a three a three x increase, okay, in value, okay. Let's 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 take it away for a second as far as it being you know valuable or not, or or the emotional well, part. Of it. Let's let's talk about what is the current price of Bitcoin? Sixty four thousand, right, or sixty eight thousand? Uh, maybe sixty eight, sixty nine. Okay, so let me ask let me ask a couple of questions here. Has yep. Bitcoin ever been this high before? No, it's the highest it's no. ever been. So, isn't the rule of the game to buy low and sell high? Yes. Then why don't we get out? And let's get into the silver because we know it's manipulated down. All so what manipulated, all markets are manipulated because you can do that when you have control of the money supply. Okay. So why don't you go with what they're manipulating downward? Because that's what they don't want you in. You got to think of things upside down. Okay. The gas price isn't going up. The value of the dollar is coming down. The food isn't getting better. Okay. It, and it's not becoming worth more. The dollar is becoming worth less that we're using to buy it. Now you have other factors in there called shrinkflation. They're reducing the size of the stuff we need. And they're taking out the good stuff that they're putting in it too. 
Yep. They're cheapening and cheapening and cheapening because Biden and this uh, Democratic uh, regime wants to spend everything that we can possibly borrow, which they've already done, and borrow more, and it's caution to the wind. How do these people manage their own financial affairs? I think from here on out, if anybody wants to run for public office, I want to see a credit statement. I want to see whether or not you're running your affairs responsibly. And I want to keep track of whether or not you're voting responsibly because you're not. We know what you're voting for. I know what you're voting for, and it's despicable. I I think that would be an awesome idea. I think also actually checking people's voter ID would probably be a good idea too. To see Why not? You check it when they buy a can of beer. Yeah, I think I mean, you gotta... is voting less important than, than getting the buzz off a of beer. No, I think you got to do that. But going back to your earlier statement, I mean, <laughs> I'm just but, but going back to your earlier statement that, that silver could hit seven hundred dollars. OK, so no, no, it should be seven hundred dollars. It should be seven hundred dollars. Two hundred seventeen thousand dollars. If you do the math, that's taking the paper that's out. Right? This board so I can do the math and prove it to you. So that's taking the paper, the paper dollars away or the paper um, derivatives away. Right. Uh, taking all representations and all derivatives of the dollar away. That would be Mexter's pyramid melting down to the first to uh, right on down to the first layer up from silver, which is gold. They're not going to melt. All these other derivatives of money are going to melt. Take it to the bank. And when it happens, and you didn't believe me. Come on back in here because I'm going to tell you, I told you so. <laughs> okay, so, okay, so here's here's what you're I'm going to just distill this in a different direction. I mean, same direction, just a different way of saying the same thing. Correct me if I'm wrong, Ted. So if you go and put your money into gold or Bitcoin right now, by, by the way, I, I love gold. I have gold. OK, well, I have. Can we keep it real here? Yeah. What are you putting into gold and silver? Are you putting money into it or are you putting digital I'm putting, fiat currency? I'm putting fiat currency into it. OK, it. so okay. I work my day job. My company gives me fiat currency. I'm turning right. it into real value. OK, right. Um, now, when I'm doing this, I'm looking at the markets today and I'm saying, OK, to, to Ted's point, my grandfather was a, a, a banker. He was instrumental in a lot of things uh, in early banking um, in what he did uh, around appraisals. He was one of the guys that helped get the appraisal system going and other things like that. Um, but he taught me one thing, and that was buy, buy low, sell high. Right. If you're looking oh, at if the you own any Bitcoin, what should you be doing? Yeah. Sell so them high, right? So right now would be a time to consider starting to dollar cost average out of your Bitcoin if you're trying to take some profits. Now, some people just want to hold it forever and ride it up and down and up and down and whatever. But here's the deal. Gold it's is also hit an all-time high. Will it go up? I think it'll keep keep moving up here because of what's going on with the uncertainty with the banks. However, to what Ted's telling us here is there's a high probability, guys, that we're going to start to see the silver become um, more understood that more people are going to want it and you're going to start to see that price go. If the real price today should be 700 and we're sitting at 30 bucks, okay, right. which is you not the big spot, let's say how much you can buy an Eagle for 30, yep. 31. Yep. You're looking at a 23% or 23X right. increase or 2300% increase, guys. So when you're looking at stuff here, I'm not going to, I'm going to qualify that a little bit further because sure. if you're United States and you buy American silver Eagles, which is the coin of the realm, and that American Silver Eagle that you paid thirty or thirty-one dollars for, and you take it back in at seven hundred dollars, what kind of tax liability do you think you have on that? Zero, because yep. if I were to take a dollar into the bank at four quarters, is that a taxable event? No. The sheer fact that the money is manipulated doesn't mean that uh, you have to pay taxes on it, but it only works with American Silver Eagles, Gold Eagles, and and redemptions up to one thousand face of junk silver. That's in the IRS tax code. It's very obscure. OK, but it is there. OK, I'm going to have to check that out because I wasn't aware of that. So that's that's something I'll have to look into it's, a little bit more. Well, actually, talk to any coin store operator talk okay, to any coins and ask them whether or not the sale or purchase of American Silver Eagles is a reportable transaction. The answer is going to be no, it's not a reportable transaction. I, mean, I think for this stuff, it's what, a thousand uh, a face. Thousand, thousand face. So you would need what, uh, four thousand uh, quarters in there to come up with a thousand face of dimes, right? I mean, it's a thousand face of uh, of quarters. Yeah, so you're talking about that much. Carry that stuff too. But see, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be cashing in divisible silver in that kind of quantity. Hold on to the divisible silver so you can make sure. change out of sure. eagles for one ounce. Because again, there's fourteen I, times to one ounce of gold, of silver. So just to kind of recap, and then we'll move on to our next one here real quick too. Um, because I want to talk about some of the slides that we got here. Yes. So okay. actually, let's get those real quick. So last okay. thing I'll just say is, guys, look. 
buy so buy low, sell high. Okay, so right now silver is lower than than a lot of these other assets that have kind of hit their tops, and that's one of the reasons we're bringing that to you today. Okay, so let's pull that up real quick. Okay. Um, I'm gonna share my um, my screen here. This is the one they need to see because you guys are are asking questions. How much silver do I need? Well, why don't you take a look at how much silver you need to be in the top one percent of the world population? There's 7.8 billion people on the face of the planet. We have a lot of slides here we need to get to. Okay, so let's, then, hit, this, uh, let's hit this one real quick. Um, Glass-Steagall Act, that's where the commercial banks were allowed to invest back again into the stock market, which was the cause of the Great Depression. And then uh, Bill Clinton repealed that in 1999. That's, yes, there is a lot of information on here. Let's hit this and hit those other slides real quick. And then after this, we're going to be talking a little bit more about how to accumulate more. And we're also going to be talking about um how to store it but are you seeing this on your screen right now i am yeah. i am yes uh-huh so what you're seeing on the left hand side if there was one person in the population that owned all the silver okay that person would own what 12 1200 or 12000 monster boxes my eyesight isn't that good can you see how many zeros on monster boxes he would have to own if he owned all the monster boxes in the world you see that up there on the very top line there, Jared? Right yeah, yeah, what is that? How many zeros? That's a lot of zeros. Yeah. So uh, basically, let's suppose it's 120,000 monster boxes. Is that what it is? It looks like it's... Uh, wait, it's more than that. It looks like it's 12 million. 12 million monster boxes. Okay, all right, fine. So one person could own it all, and he would have all 12 million monster boxes, all right? But how many monster boxes or how many ounces of silver would you need to hold in order for you to even get on the chart? All right. So you take over. I like to try to get people at least in the green area. So if you're in the green, uh, 12 to 30 monster boxes will take care of you of American silver eagles. And that's what we're talking about. Now, in the event that you got 12 monster boxes, what that would do is that would put you in the 0.01%, of the global population meaning that there would be only 988,791 people out of a population of 7.8 billion that would have real money, okay? And then you can go up the line from there. I means some of the people in our group are 191 monster boxes, and there's no way they'll go up to, what's that next one, 401 or 481? 481. Huh? Yeah, 481. Yeah, that's unattainable for anybody that I know. But <laughs> anyway... <laughs> Can huh? you find that many? It's going to be the question. <laughs> I can, there are 45 uh, type. Uh, there are 45 seals that I know of right now at one lo one location, and there are another 25 that I know of that are currently at another location. I think it's Pimbex. Golden Eagle has the 45. Pimbex has 25. And I and, found two local, but I'm having a hard time finding 45 local. Yeah, then uh, you won't find 45 anywhere. Go to Atmax. Go to SD Bullion. Go to, um, uh, uh, what's the other one? JR, JR, J and Bullion. Yeah, None Bullion. of them have the kind of supply that this guy has. That's why we go to him. So uh, okay. when my, my roommate uh, went with me, that we went down there and uh, we upped the order from 20 to 40 monster boxes. And he had them and he gave them to us and we left. Why don't you put up a couple of those pictures so they know that we're not Real telling quick, them. I'm going to stop us for a second here. Um, guys, we have... 638 people in here watching right now, which is awesome. For my channel, it's blowing all kinds of records, Ted. So you've blown the records right off the lid here. We've got we some smart people out there. But we only have, have you ever heard this information anywhere else. Have you ever heard this anywhere else? The <laughs> real cause of all the problem is Keynesian economics having a battle with Austrian monetary economics. Every all the water is 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 messed up and frothy below us. If you look up above us, okay, the water's clear. Every dog has its day. I'm an economist. This is our day. You guys are listening to us for a little while. You're going to have your boat rocked. I'm telling okay. you, we're rocking it right now. We're well, getting guys, rid of in and we're bringing an Austrian. If you want to help rock the boat more, we have 654 people in here right now, only 220 thumbs up. So either you guys yeah. don't know you know how to press the on? thumbs up, we'll or cost you're, not, you're not enjoying this, or you are mesmerized and you just haven't gone over to hit that thumbs up. But please do that. We ought to be able to get this up to like four or 500 thumbs up, by the way. So if guys, we get it up to 600 thumbs up, can we make a donation to the church for a hundred bucks? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. I mean, I if if we can get it up to if we can get up to 500 um, 
Uh, no, no, no. How many people are watching right now? 600? Oh, 629. Yep. Got it. 600 people hit the like button right now. And uh, Jared will donate 100 bucks to his church, the one that he just finished uh, giving the, the, uh, the sermon to. I will do that. If also if at, a, at, at 600 uh, likes here, guys, we will also, I'll give away a silver coin as well. Come on. It helps with the matrix, folks. What it does by you clicking the like button, the percentage of the people watching compared to the percentage of the people liking it has a skewed algorithm within YouTube and it'll put it out there for more people to hear what you're hearing. Yep. Okay. So you're going to hit that. So hit so the we'll like do, button. It ain't going to hurt you. We'll do some silver giveaways here, guys, at the end of it to help you guys get your stacks going. So we hit this. Now let's hit the next one, um, Ted, here. I'm going to stop sharing that. Let me share my next one here. Also, um, if you want a copy of that slide, call me. Reach out to my office, ted at tedspeaks.net. We will send that out to you. I can't find it anywhere else. The only way you're going to get it is electronically. Um, but that is a chart you should keep close to you. So to snowball derivatives, this is the snow. This is what's happening right now. The derivatives have all been packaged up into, um, and think of it like an EFT, electronic uh, funds trade, uh, traded form, okay? So these derivatives, they're trading within a certain trading volume uh, in, in a trading uh, uh, trading area, okay? The problem is, is that when that trading breaks out, either above or below, that triggers the automatic sale of derivatives. And it's a snowball effect. The one, see the, uh, see the snowball in the top left, okay? Yep, right see here. how it gets bigger and bigger and bigger as it comes down? That is picking up momentum. At this point, there's no stopping it. And we're already at the point right now. We really haven't seen the top snowball on the top left, but I can tell you that it's already formed. It's already there. And it isn't going to take much, it didn't take very long at all for these snowballs to come running down the hill. And this is called a derivative time bomb snowball. Okay. There is no coming out of this thing between that and Operation Sandman, which is about to kick off from all the other countries deciding in the ensemble, ensemble to uh, to sell their U.S. treasuries. You have this. You have you have the 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 treasuries being re redeemed for our underpriced gold. Okay, and you have the, the derivative market exploding, which is then going to cause the people owning these derivatives to finally say, "Hey, we want our money out of the banks," but they're going to beat you to the punch because they they know that they have a superior claim against the money you put in there. You don't know this stuff, folks. You need to know it. And there's no way you'd know it unless somebody came on here and spilled the beans with you. But it's painful. The first so, time that I shared this, I got a phone call from my OSJ, Office of Supervisional Jurisdiction from, from, James, from uh, ING. And James calls me up and said, Ted, what are you doing talking about QCIPs? Come on, these guys are still working out here. I said, James, I think the party's over. It's time to tell everybody the truth. Well, he wasn't too happy with that because he's still getting paid out from the sale of his firm. I sold mine back in 2010. I'm done. He's still operating his. But at any rate, a, a, a derivative snowball, okay, causes a set of other, other uh, financial events underneath of it that then begin trading outside their trading, uh, their trading parameters, which then blows it up, okay? Like, for instance, we put too much uh, gunpowder in a bullet. It might blow the shell apart, right? That's what's going to happen here. You got to measure the amount of bullet you put into a, into a um, into a gun, right? Into a bullet or whatever. And isn't that man measured by grains? How many grains of gunpowder? Yes. How many grains are silver in a U.S. dollar? And do you see any grains in your dollars? Uh, I couldn't find anything there. You won't find any grains in your dollars because it doesn't exist. They're creating this digital fiat currency globally and have been for over 170 years. And they got us all to accept it. And now what I'm saying is time is up. There's a new sheriff in town. The old BIS is being ripped out. We're going to put our new currency back in there. The patient will be out of commission for a few days. Okay. Maybe less than that, but the patient has already been fully anesthetized. Okay. And has been taking all the drugs as of midnight. It's been taking off all the drugs. We can't make, we're not going to let them make any more loans. Okay. So all the massive amount of heroin and cocaine, all that nasty stuff they've been put into our economy. That's going to come out no more. Now what's going to happen if you have a Coke or no heroin, I guess, right. If you have a heroin addict and all of a sudden you stop giving him heroin, what happens? He goes from massive withdrawals, you know, sweats and all that stuff. Okay. You're going to have the same thing happen here. And I'm telling you in advance, if you're smart, 
the 600 of you watching this show right now, hit the like button for me, please, just as a favor. Just show me that we can do something together and we can join this uh, journey together and make a difference. Let's show Jared that his time was well spent putting me on the air today because I called him earlier and it's three hour time zone. I said, you know, Jared, we got to get going, man. He said, well, dude, I'm come to I'm, what? How'd you get this number? I said, hey, we got to get on the air. So, well, I got church. I, I'm doing a, uh, a sermon. I said, what time are you getting home? He said, well, I think I might be at home by six o'clock. Let's go on at six. And guess what? He's here at six. Please hit the like my, button. My tie, my shirt, my my suit coat's over here on the chair. I had to hurry. All right, so how many off. looks? How many are we up to 600 yet? Uh, we're like? at 384, so we're uh, slacking nice. a little bit. Uh, um, okay, do we want to look at any of the other slides on this? And then, no, I not till we get to 600. Let's pause it for a second. Come on, guys, hit the like button. Okay, you guys, we're at 384. Let's Come see on. what we can get higher. Come on. All right, let's go to the next one. I'm not going to penalize you guys that did hit the like button because more than half of you did. So let's go to the next slide here, which should be the uh, the snowball, excuse me, the uh, avalanche versus the snowball. Yeah, I'm having trouble going through my slide. Okay, there we go. So a debt avalanche is what happens when people accumulate, say, 20 different credit cards. And what they do is they pay off and they make the minimum payment on the highest interest rate card until they have until they made the minimum payment. And then all the, uh, the 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 minimum payments have been satisfied. Now, if you have an extra 100 bucks or left over, typically you use that to pay off the debt with the highest interest rate first. Then you move on the next and the next. However, with a debt snowball, it puts it all into a big uh, uh, into a big like ETF that we talked about. OK, and that one blows up. It goes to the next one. That one blows up, goes to the next one. And that's how you wind up with a small little snowball at the top turning into a huge snowball at the bottom. Do you see what I'm talking about? Yep. Are you with me? There's the snowballs. There's the right. Okay. That's so let's go over what bail-ins are because this is how we did that one. So let's go over what bail-ins are because this is how the, um, the, 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 uh, the derivative holders are going to get their money. Because in the Dodd-Frank Act that was passed, okay, uh, back in 2010, the Dodd-Frank Act says that derivative holders have a superior lien on your account over that of the, the account holder. And that is actually confirmed in the Dodd-Frank Act in the bail-in. Okay, so the Dodd-Frank Act contains the bail-in provision, and a bail-in is opposed to a bailout. A bailout is when the government bails out the bank. A bail-in is when the depositors bail out the bank. But the bottom line is they're going to be making life like thieves in the night. Think of me of Paul Revere. The British are coming. The British coming. The British coming. <sighs> That's what's happening, folks. It's going to happen. It's going to happen one time, and it's going to happen. And when it does, it's going to hit you like a thief in the night. It Here's could happen by Friday. It could happen by Friday. I'm not saying it will, but it I could happen not. by Friday. I'm not, I'm not ready for it to happen by Friday. But I'd like to ask the audience here, okay? So right now, we're sitting at 412. Keep hitting that thumbs up, guys. This is to get the message out here, okay? Look, I got my day job. I make great money. What we're trying to do here is get the message out. That's even why I started the YouTube channel. My wife and family want to know why I'm spending so much time with you guys doing this. I think it's very important to wake as many people up as we can. That's that's why I'm doing this. Um, it, before I started this channel, I was the guy that was protecting everything with asset protection. I was hiding. I was trying to be, you know, basically off, um, off any kind of a social media and all that stuff. And all of a sudden now I'm all back into it because I, I really believe in this. But what I do want to, what I do want to put there is this. Um, what do you guys think would happen if there's a bank bail-in? I'd like to get your comments down below here. What happens? What happens if on Friday um, you go to take the money out of your bank and you find out your bank's not doing well. And instead of getting a bail out by the feds, um, they're doing a bail-in where they're telling you that your money is is being put in to save the bank. Um, you know, will they give you any kind of a, a certificate or something that says that you have some ownership in this bank now? Maybe. Yeah, they will. You'll give. You'll be then given stock in the then defunct okay, bank. Isn't that nice? Is that what you wanted when you made your That's deposit the there? Was that made abundantly clear to you? And when you opened up a brokerage account, did you read the brokerage account provisions? Did you read in there? It says that you're giving them permission to hypothecate and rehypothecate the assets that you put in their account. And if they're selling all these stocks and bonds and mutual funds all day long, how many times did they ask for permission from you to do so? Oh, they haven't? That's because you already gave them permission when you signed the account form in the first place. Uh, yeah, uh, so that, that kind of well, freaks me out. Let me go back to you real quick. Just a second, Ted. We're going to go big on you here. So show, show us that real quick. 
Okay, this is the Glass-Steagall Act. The Glass-Steagall Act was passed after the Great Depression was over because they realized the cause of the Great Depression was a, uh, was a withdrawal of the USM2 money supply. So they took the currency out of the market because the currency was used to redeem the shares of stock then held by the commercial banks that had gotten involved in, in taking your deposits and putting it into shares of stock in the stock market. It completely screwed up the metrics of the stock market. And uh, then the, the, uh, the people with the, the stock got their money out and the depositors got stuck with nothing. So since there wasn't any money for them to, to use, they lost their homes, their farms, everything, because they couldn't pay the taxes. Yeah. How sad. And actually, there's a group of people called mud eaters. I kid you not, I've done a lot of research into this. There are people called mud eaters, and they would feed their children clay because they had to put something in their stomach because it was tearing the kids' stomachs up. And that would cause their skin to look like um, uh, sort of like a pale color. Look it up, folks. You don't want to get to the point where you have to eat clay. All right. No, you if don't you have don't money. Want to digits in a bank. You have the ability right now to get your money, not the not the receipts or not the redemption certificates for the money. This is the money. Everything else is a proxy for this. So it's when you're talking about spreading out investments, OK, we're not spreading out. Invest what we're doing is we're circling the, we're circling the wagons right now. Then, no, we're not investing in anything. We're going to money. We're gonna hold it until the word's over. Let, let's address that. So I, I want to address a couple things here real quick on this. So first off. What I'm not going to tell everybody to do is go take all your cash out tomorrow morning. Okay. You got to have money in the bank to operate. You still need oh, to pay your right. bills. Okay. Right. So don't go crazy doing that. Now, if you have more than 250,000 in an account, you are playing Russian roulette and you could lose it even from the FDIC. If your bank has problems and it's it, the FDIC kicks in, uh, frankly, there's not enough money to bail out very many banks. And I, and I shouldn't say bail out. That's not bail out the banks. That's that is um, to pay out the depositors. If that money runs completely out, then Congress has to basically approve to, to put more money out there. It's shocking to know there isn't any money there. The diff account is completely empty. There's, there's, totally enough to cover. So there's nothing there. So it, it's called the, de the deposit insurance fund is near empty. Would and the government allow us to completely run out of all the FDI and no one gets bailed out? I, you know, I don't know. Um, I don't know what would happen in that situation. That seems like riots and, and chaos. So maybe that doesn't happen. But well, I'll get, it, it, it'll be a shutdown and uh, things are. No, it's not going up. on here, folks. It's reality. This is what's going to happen. So, no fiat currency ever lasts forever. None That's of them last forever. So you guys, so here's the deal. We can't tell you the exact time it's going to happen. We can tell you that something's happening tomorrow um, that looks like it's going to start that snowball running down the, the hill faster. OK, or maybe that avalanche coming down. And so what you've got to be aware of is your fiat money always runs down, right? We're only at 2% of the original value of the U.S. dollar, okay? They took all of the gold and silver that was backing it. They got rid of that. Mm -hmm. So our, our change, not this stuff, but the change you get in the store today is, is not even worth what the thing is worth, right? Except for the, the – well, actually, the pennies aren't even worth a penny anymore. Let me, let me so, propose something to you. Suppose you followed my advice, okay? Yep. And you took all the, of the cash that you had anywhere else. And you did put it into um, uh, American money if you're in America, okay? All but say one or two months uh, uh, supply um, monthly expenses. And then let's suppose what you need to do is, uh oh, I put too much in the silver. What do you think the problem is? Just simply go back and sell it. The demand yeah. for the silver is going up. We were buying monster boxes originally for ten thousand dollars each. They're now over sixteen two, and we've paid as high as eighteen five. OK, you guys out there in the West Coast, you guys get these what are called San Francisco strap monster boxes with the yellow straps on them. Man, they sell for a premium out here on the East Coast. But the thing is, is that if you put all your redemption certificates into real money, where's the problem? Can you take the real money and always get a redemption certificate? Yeah, you can find anybody to give a piece of paper for real silver, real money. I did it unwittingly. So in terms of saying, take all your investments, my question would be to you, how many investments would you put in any basket that didn't have a bottom to it? If you were to lift up a bottom, if you were to put your stocks in one basket, bonds in another, crypto in another, and the market went to hell in a handbasket, we went to lift up the basket, would the, the, the bottom be blown out of it in stocks? If everything crashed, would the bottom be blown out of stocks? Oops, no. that basket didn't have a bottom to it. Let's go to bonds. The bond market is going to crash before the stock market, okay? So that means the bottom is filling out your second basket you decide to diversify in, right?
And then also with the crypto, you by diversify into that, right? We're, this is not investments we're in right now. We're returning yep. back. We're circling the wagons. We're getting back in the money. This, folks, where is it? This is money, okay? This is a proxy for money. This is a proxy for proxy for money. The stock certificates, if I can find them here anywhere. Here, <laughs> this is a proxy for the dollar, okay? So this will get you the dollar. The dollar, as long as it's accepted, may get you the silver. What I'm saying is forget about all that nonsense for the time being. I'm telling you, you have a trained economist on here, Austrian trained economist, telling you the crap is about to hit the fan. Let's suppose you follow my advice. What is the harm in running for cover? Duck, get well, out so, of the way. But, but Ted, let's hit that here for a second. So a couple things, guys. Look, um, I don't see silver going to zero. OK, it has yeah. it has industrial value. Um, you can't mine this stuff for under, I think it's like 16 or 15 bucks a, an ounce or somewhere around oh, there. Oh, so. why is that? Do you know why that is? That's I mean, because the real mining costs are buried in the cost. Oh, yeah, the mining sure. costs of silver are actually buried in top of energy to mine it. I'm sorry? Yeah, cost of, it's the cost of energy to mine it in the whole process, guys. So silver cannot go below 16 or the mines shut down. If the mines shut down, then the price of silver goes back up, okay. supply and demand. Most of them already have shut so, down. So here's the thing, guys. Um, I would rather be too early, uh, or I sh the, the saying goes, I'd rather be a um, a, uh, a, a, a year, a year too early than a second too late. Than a minute, a second too late, right? Yeah. So I have I have a bunch of this kind of stuff, right? I have silver eagles. I have a lot of other kinds of silver that's out there. So to kind of round up our silver part of this, um, what I'm not doing is taking all the silver and going shoot. I I heard from Ted that eagles are the best way to go. So I'm going to take all my silver and lose 30% just no. to dump it at my LCS and buy Eagles. We're not saying that. But when I go to buy going forward, I think Ted's made a really good point that um, that it's important to look at the option of saying, hey, what, maybe I should do some more Silver Eagles. I don't have a lot of Silver Eagles. He's made a good point to it. So it's up to you guys to make your own decision on what you buy, when you buy. But keep in mind, I built a portfolio from zero to 700 million when I sold the practice. So I think I do know what I'm talking about. So he doesn't know what he's talking about, but you guys have your preferences. You have your own free agency and free will to make a choice on what you're going to do, whether you're going to buy or not, how much you're going to buy, what you're going to buy. Um, some of my friends on here are gold bugs. They're going to keep buying gold because they see gold performing. That's okay. It's good, better, best. At least you're getting into something physical, but stay in the coin of the realm so you don't have to, it, 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 it's most recognizable. You don't want to buy some obscure thing. Like suppose you got a one ounce coin from uh, Jamaica or from uh, Botswana. Okay. That's going to not going to be recognizable here in the United States, but American silver Eagle is the most widely recognized one ounce sovereign silver coin in the world yep it is the best thing to buy second would be maple leaves i guess and then go on from there but the american silver eagle bar none is the world's most widely recognized one ounce sovereign coin take it to the well don't take it to the bank <laughs> put it in your pocket don't take it to the bank if you take it I, i've been, I've been training too many tellers around here what to look for for me and um i'm not finding silver anymore i think i i told him i know a guy that's going around to dental offices and he's asking the debt i kid you not it's true. Everything I'm telling you is true. He goes around to dental offices and he asks in the dentist for the old teeth that he pulled out that might have a silver fulling, filling in it. Yeah, I'm not doing that. that I'm not I doing that. <laughs> uh, but yeah. okay. Someone just asked Ted, I wanted to answer the question real quick. They said, how much yeah. silver do I need? So what I wanted to pull up here, guys, real quick is I was talking to Ted about this the other day. Um, if, if, if everybody that wants silver tries to go after it and you have um, 60 ounces of silver, you're going to be in the top 1.26% of the, of the population of the planet. Doesn't get you an A plus, but you still got a solid A. So, you know, how much do you need? I would say, you know, I, I would, I, I recommend a bit more. <laughs> with hundred ounces and uh, trying to get to hundred ounces as fast as you can. That's, that's me. Tomorrow. Um, you guys don't wait. If okay, let me put it this way: if you don't have any silver and you and you haven't done it yet, I highly recommend going tomorrow and buying some. Okay, if you've got questions on where to get that, you don't know what to do. I've got a bunch of videos on that. I've got Silver University that you can go check out. Um, I'm much heavier in gold than silver, so this this thing for talking to Ted has been educational for me, and it's got me thinking. Let me, because let me get some straight here. I love gold. I absolutely love gold. And when it goes one to one, I'm swapping probably about 40% of the stack for gold. 
So I'm going to take American That's silver. Key, guys, it's the ratio that Ted's looking at is what he's really getting to here as far as why silver versus gold. If it was flipped the other way around, he'd be telling you to go get gold. Exactly. Exactly. So, you nailed it, Jared. So, so that's what I would look at. If you've got questions, you can send me an email, stacking surfer, uh, an email at, what is it? Stacking surfer at gmail.com. <laughs> One of my mods throw it in there. You can hit that. If you guys haven't hit the thumbs up yet, please do that. We're at 459. We get to 600. We'll, we'll do some fun silver giveaways. We don't have a whole lot of time. Thanks, folks. I really gonna- appreciate the support you're giving to Jared by smashing that like button. Um, but the other thing I want to say is please subscribe to Ted's channel. We're building his, he's going to be building his channel up. Um, he'll probably be able to share a little bit more on that channel than we may share on my channel, just depending on what's going on. But I get thrown uh, off. <laughs> you, I, yeah. You tell he, me he delisted. I don't know. But, but the other thing I'll put out there is um, subscribe to my channel. Um, I've got a great video I just dropped about um, silver from um, pirate ships. And I've got another one that'll be coming out next week that'll be showing you silver that was pulled out of um, by an archaeologist that's been, um, he had several years stint on um, Pawn Stars. It's Sean Rich. Um, he also was on um, National Geographic, had a show. So mm-hmm. I did a video with him. He was down here at the Long Beach Coin Show and we'll have a lot of fun. Um, Can I break in just real quickly on this? This is the yeah. M2 money supply being withdrawn from our economy. This is key, okay? Do you see the trajectory here? Now, you get them the full thing, okay? Look, has yep. it ever been this low? Do you see you see this down here? No, has it was- ever been this low? The answer yeah. is no, it hasn't. Even during the Great Depression, it hasn't been this low. Now's the time, folks. I'm not kidding you. Get whatever you can out of the bank. Get the Eagles. They're going to skyrocket in value because they're going back to the U.S. Constitution. And as far as what I've read... Anything denominated in Federal Reserve notes as it's as the BIS is being pulled out because they own all the banks around the world is going to be repudiated as well okay. as all their debt payments, the whole ball of wax. So own the money. Don't own any proxies for it. Get it. Hide it in your own home and then duck and watch. OK, and so let's hit, the last the thing. Over. let's hit the last thing as we kind of go into this. Um, two last things, because we, we're a little bit over time and I've got to run in a minute here. But um, one is, guys, look. I'm going to just reiterate it. It's better to have something than nothing. Okay. Um, You know, if you've got gold, hold on to it. If you've got silver, hold on to it. If you don't have any silver and you got a bunch of gold, now's probably a good time to think about moving some of it around. I can't, I'm not giving you financial advice. I'm just giving you some ideas, at least considering the ideas of those things. Um, If you don't have any of the metals, I, I highly recommend going out and getting them. Um, if you are heavy, heavy into crypto and you don't have any metals and you have made some great profits, this is the time to do it. A lot of the online bullion dealers so allow you to trade your crypto in for gold and silver. Um, if you don't believe that gold and silver is worth anything and no one's going to go for it, then you need to go research why, um, what's happening with these central banks. All over the world, the central banks are buying up gold like crazy. Will they start doing it with silver? I don't know. Maybe they are doing a fair amount of that. Maybe the COMEX is completely drained. We don't know. I don't have anybody on the inside that can tell me, but I'm hearing rumors about things like that. So, Well, the is exchanges it fair- are being shut down because they don't have the funds. So they may not have that stuff. So the issue is when you when everybody wants the silver or everybody wants the gold, it may be very hard to find it. And if the price is skyrocketing up, priced in fiat dollars in your country, you probably won't be able to acquire it because people won't do it. I've got an eBay store that you guys can go to. I've got coins that are for sale there. And I've got people trying to lowball me right now on some of the prices. They're going up. But here's the deal. I can tell you that I will shut that store Mm -hmm. down tomorrow if all of a sudden the price of gold jumps up drastically or the price of silver drops up because- Because they won't know what to pay to replenish the stock. But I, I don't know what to price. I don't know what the price thing because exactly. I don't know what I can rebuy it at to put it back. If the on the dollar side. goes to zero, will it even be priced in in, in dollars? A million times zero is still know. zero, right? So how many shovelfuls of dirt will you accept for an ounce of silver? For so sure. when the currency that we're currently using collapses, like all the other currencies that I have examples of, and uh, if you uh, did we get did you show any uh, copies or show any pictures of the of the uh, defunct currencies that I've collected over the last 10 years? Is uh, it, we, did, we did on our last show. We you actually showed okay. us a bunch of those, but um, I have them all laid out this time. So maybe next time we get together, yeah, I'll show great. you the, the so, pictures. So that's kind of, you know, how, how can you accumulate more of this, guys? I'm going to do a video. My wife is really not happy with me. You'll have to talk to Nick's coins about this. Um, 
she she does collect all the bottles. So I live in a state where you pay five, you basically pay 10 cents for every bottle that you buy, no matter what you're buying. So if you're buying a six pack, you're paying, you know, 60 cents for it. You can redeem that at a place. Okay. Most people just throw it away in the trash. They don't even bother with it. Well, things are getting expensive enough. I thought I would hold on to mine. Um, I'm going to see how many of those bottles I have to get in order to go buy a Silver Eagle. So I'm going to make a video on that. I'm accumulating all this stuff in my garage. My wife is being driven nuts by it. Um, and I don't necessarily need to do that to go buy a Silver Eagle, but it's an example. If you don't have money to buy a Silver Eagle, you can go find a bunch of cans and bottles. If you live in a state where you can redeem them, you can go redeem them. You'll get money. Uh, you'll get fiat currency. Go turn that into real money like silver. Um, if you're drinking a lot of coffee at an expensive coffee place, okay, I'm not going to call anybody out, but the ones that have the green logo tend to be very, very expensive. And if you're doing a lot of that and you're doing it multiple times a day or you're eating out at lunch all the time or you're eating a lot of dinner um, at restaurants, consider pulling back and using some of that money to go buy something that's real. When when the SHTF happens, and I have no doubt it will happen, um, that's why I created this channel. Um you're not going to be able to prepare. It's already too late. And at that, that point, you're, you're stuck in with whatever you have. So mm -hmm. get food, get water, get protection, ammunition and guns. Um, and have, really get silver, get real money in your hands. Have real money in your hands. For me, I'm going to always hold on to some gold. I'm not going to, people are asking questions. I'm not running out tomorrow and selling all my gold. Um, I no, have don't, of, don't swap one type of money or uh, one type of silver for yeah, another gold. Or whatever. 33 gold, you can't pry it out of my dead hand. You'll have to pry it out of my dead hands. I'm not selling that stuff. It's history. It's historic. Mm -hmm. I'm not selling my ancient coins. That's history. I bought that for a specific yeah. reason. It's fun. But the, the silver that I do have that's in bars, I'm highly looking at taking some of that. And if I can sell it and not lose money, I'll be converting some of that to eagles and new stuff. Okay, let's show that real quick, Ted. Okay. There you go, guys. This uh, is how you get in touch we have with a lot more information, and uh, I'd like with a chance to get through even more of it next time. So please stay tuned. But in the meantime, here are all the uh, uh, resources. Down here, what we've done is we've chopped up these long um, uh, podcasts or broadcasts that we do into different snippets so you can find what you're looking for in each different section. Okay? So reach out to us. I think the thing you might want to get really is that, uh, that how many ounces of silver do you need to hold? And why is that chart just towards silver? Why? Because the smart people know the right the right purchase right now is silver because the metrics and the mining ratios and the paper to silver ratios out of whack. Let's be smart. You can play around. You can have a lot more fun. You can do what you want and buy what you want after the reset. You can go buy, if you had the right kind of money, the silver here, go out and buy all the gold you want. I love gold, but I'm not going to pay 89 times the amount of silver for it. That doesn't make any sense to me when it comes out of the ground seven to one. So at any rate, what do you think? Be your own bank. Okay. Mr. I think it's a good idea. So, so guys, look, as always, this is information I want to bring you to my channel. Um, I like to cover a lot of things about stacking, about being prepared for things. Everybody that I have on my channel is going to have different opinions of things. Okay, guys. So this is Ted. This is this Ted's done this for a long time. Um, this is what he believes. He wanted to share this information. I I wanted to be able to help. It worked. It out worked. There. I've never had a client lose any money, and I grew a portfolio to seven hundred. Right. And if, if you've got a, on that, and if you've got an opposing opinion, or you you think there's a different idea of things, I'm always happy to have you send me a, a an email. Maybe we'll have you on another yeah, video. Me too. Uh, an opposing opinion. Maybe we put a, together a little panel and we talk about mm -hmm. a few different things on why, um, you know, why silver, why gold, why platinum. Uh, why don't why we have a debate with a crypto expert? I'd love to debate a crypto oh, expert. I'd like to find out what kind of arguments they would have against uh, the value of not having a unique identifier. So here's the last thing I'm going to say. We're at 504 thumbs up. I'll give us exactly one minute to get to Thank six. You. <laughs> we have hey, folks, if you smash the like button, okay, <laughs> send me a, send me an email. And I would like to send you a, a, a little note. I really appreciate this. Jared's worked his butt off and I'm starting to understand how the YouTube thing works. Uh, apparently, the more people that like it, the more time you spend on it and the more people that are there puts it up higher in the queue. So they recommend this information for other people that have an interest in money or silver or whatever else. So by clicking the like button, you're helping them, okay, to get access to the information that you had to God or somebody put in your heart to turn in here. To, to in here I, I, and the other thing I want to tell you guys again real quick, because I got a nice shout out from um, from Ron's basement. Um, 
If you haven't seen the video this morning that Ted had with Ron's basement, go check it out. There was some good information in That's there. Really we, we have not That's covered really the, It's not a, an exact repeat. There's there's a, there's different information on on these channels. So mm -hmm. check that out. Um, Ron said something that I that I thought was really important too. Is it's it's not Ted Tube. It's not Jared or Stacking Surfer Tube. It is YouTube. This is about you guys and helping get information out there. You don't have to believe us. You don't have to do anything that's being recommended here. Um, frankly, I'm not a financial advisor. Ted was a financial planner. planner right. So he's giving you some information that's shared with the way he thinks and the way he do stuff. Um, pay will pay for my advice, folks. It's not <laughs> given away. You have okay. to pay big bucks for a financial plan from a fee only certified financial plan is going to cost you $1,500 to $6,000, yeah. but it'll be worth every penny of it. There you go. So the other thing I'll throw out is when I have my hit my 5,000 subscribers, um, if you guys haven't subscribed, hit subscribe. When I hit 5,000, I'm going to be giving gold and silver away. It's kind of a thing we stackers like to do. It's kind of a fun way to give back to the community, but we'll be having a very big epic party. And um, I'm ready. We'll have a hand in where? Pop in. Let's, uh, let's meet everybody. I'm thinking about having a convention in Buckhead in Georgia um, around uh, in the first week in June or so. And I'm going to invite some other podcasters. You're going to be included in that too, Jared. You okay. and Ron and a couple of heavy hitter guys. I'm going to see if we can get Keith Newmeyer to participate in this too. Uh, but I think it's time we have a symposium that's not jam-packed out the doors. It's thousands of dollars to join. No, I think what we do is we do something maybe three or $400. And uh, it's for a weekend. And uh, you take, your own care, and take care of your own hotel reservations. But we'll have a jam-packed schedule that will be very nicely presented over a two-day period of time in Buckhead. So watch for that is coming out as we had the four seasons in Buckhead. And then Azure Blue, if you're still listening, I don't know if you are, we should definitely talk. It would be great to uh, to have you on talking with Ted if you're open to doing that one of these days. Um, he's he got a great guy? background. He, uh, he, he is, he's kind of cut from your cloth. Oh, oh, great. But you I think know how few people are out there like me. I'd love to have a buddy to I talk to. I think he's more of a gold guy. So it, it could be okay. a fun day to kind of All talk right. gold and silver. Okay. Um, well, I don't know. If heads in the right direction. So. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, we'll, we'll, I'll circle back with him. But anyway, um, guys, look, we got really close. We didn't quite hit it. I got to pull the plug here um, to go help with some family. We, we hit 548, Ted, which is pretty close to six, but it ain't six. <laughs> um. Okay. You that didn't hit the like button, you know who you are and you know who, who kept us from hitting our goal. 546 people reached, worked hard to reach it. We only needed, what, uh, 50 some people more. Are there 50? We have 50 others that can smash the like button out there. Yeah, you got to hit it. You got to hit fast because I'm going to pull a plug soon. But if we didn't do this, guys, anybody that's watching, listening, um, I'm close to hitting that 5,000 subscribers. Actually, I don't even know where I'm at right now. Let's see where I'm well, at. Well, let, let's subscribe to his channel too, folks, because I'm going to be back. Am I going to be back, Jared? Yeah, we're going to be back. We're going to okay. do more of this. So I'm sitting right now, just so you guys know, 4,549 subscribers. We get that up to 5,000. There's gold, silver. There's going to be a really fun party. Um, and uh, we'll do a lot of fun if stuff. What I think is going to happen, I'll come back on your show on Friday and say, I told you so, and show you exactly what the heck happened. And congratulate <laughs> those of if, you if, that were smart enough to follow my advice. If the internet's still working and they haven't censored everything and Friday's melted down, we're, I need you to come back well, on. Well, as soon as the internet comes back up, I'll, uh, I'll come back on and say, congratulations, let's have a party, guys. <laughs> if it hasn't melted down, I think the other thing to look for, guys, if is- If it hasn't, just wait. You're, you're, you're waiting for the right time because yeah, this is immutable there. wealth. It'll always be there. See, the thing is with people that are holding stock, they have to be right each and every day the market doesn't crash. For us, we're just waiting for our day. Do you see the difference? We're not under any time constraints whatsoever. It doesn't matter to us. They on, We only have to be right one day. They have to be right every day or they lose what they have. I like the odds of us. Do you? I do. I think it's good. Okay, so I'm going to take one last look here before I we call it here. Because, oh, 558, guys. We're so close. Anyway, <laughs> all right. Well, we'll have to call it next time. Thank you. Okay, we're coming Excellent. on. We'd love we'll to have you on again. From 500 to 750. Okay, yeah, let's do it, guys. So, anyway, look, it, this is about community, it's about you guys. We're all going to have different opinions. I'd love to hear from others of you. Um, I'd love to hear you know what's going on in your life and, and what you guys are thinking about doing here. But, um, one last thing I want to show some yep. people ask whether or not I have credentials and that kind of stuff. Here it is, right here. That's the last year that I really uh, kept active in the business. 
it took me about 18 months to find the right buyer for it because most of them wanted to strip everything that I'd done away and resell new stuff. American Express wanted to do that. And I said, no, we're not going to do that. So it took me about 18 months to find the right buyer and ultimately did. So at any rate, there it all is. So folks, follow the message. This is great advice. People pay good money for this the advice. And right now, um, your opportunity is uh, the window's closing. And I hate to get your, see your fingers caught in the windowsill as you're trying yeah. to get in. If you don't have any of this, this is the other recommendation that I have Absolutely. Is that outside of the, the Silver Eagles. Yep. Um, when the Silver Eagles are at massive premium over the rounds, I know a lot of you waited to do that, but right now you're looking at pretty good prices for it. Um, so shop around, look around for things. If you're looking for stuff and you can't find it, send me an email. Um, I've got access to, uh, to suppliers that could supply you. Okay. Um, In closing, I had just one other thought here. I, I received an email and the guy was asking me, what are some of the reasons why you like silver? And it's not really emotional reasons. It's logical reasons. First of all, it's immutable wealth. It has an incredible history. It's permanent. The provenance of it. See, when you have your money, it's in a vault, okay? And that person that owns the vault has $300 million. Is it possible he's using the contents of that vault to collateralize a loan? Haven't vaults gone out of business in, in, uh, in Europe? They have. And hasn't a vault gone out of business in, in Delaware? It has. If you were holding all this wealth, are you happy just taking in a little bit of money people are paying for storage fees? Or why not cash in where the real bucks are, use it to collateralize a loan, then when the loan comes due, boom, they come in and take it. And the the the, the, vault, the money, that the assets that are in a vault right now, they can be seized by the U.S. government. And what a great place to go to get their money back. They know exactly where it is. We're at times of war right now. And we talked about a confiscation that happened in 1933 where we were on the gold standard. We don't have to worry about that as citizens at this point because we're not on a gold standard. So you don't have to worry about the confiscation stuff. Don't be buying obscure overpriced coins. One other thing I'd like to show However, you. This obscure is, overpriced coin is yours. At least some lucky guy or gal. If we get to 600 before we shut this down, I'll give away that's this. That's a beautiful track. coin. It's a beautiful coin. If you guys uh, get us up to 600, that's beautiful. I'd like to see who wins that. All right. So to your point on that, Ted, um, we had a we had a vaulting facility, private vaulting um, safe deposit facility. OK, so we're not talking IRAs. Mm -hmm. It just people putting their stuff in there in Beverly Hills got raided a few years ago. Um, they took everything, all the gold, all the silver, whatever people had in there. They still don't have it to this day. Four hundred people. And I guarantee you, every one of them is very wealthy, has attorneys and is in the process of trying to get that back from the FBI, and they will not give it back. Well, folks, follow along. Please subscribe to his channel. We're going to come back on after this is all over as far as the reset is concerned. We're going to be talking about estate planning. And here's a term I'd like you to write down. In, oh, they hit 600. In, I have to get this thing away now. <laughs> okay. In, the first word is in. Second word is terrorum, T-E-R-R-O-R-E-M. It's an in terrorum clause. Basically what it does, it stops any contention after you're dead and gone. It stops the beneficiaries from fighting one another. Or maybe you want to leave money not to one particular person. You want to leave it to someone else. Okay. It, the interorum clause will stop any challenges to your estate plan. So that's just one tip. It's a reason to subscribe. Please get it to 600. Make Jared's day. It ain't going to cost you nickel. Just, it, just help us out a little bit here. It's not a matter of, you know, it's the way that the program works inside of YouTube in order to elevate this, get it jammed up so that people will know to take a look at it. Okay. All right, we just hit it. So we're going to give this away real quick and then we are going to call it. So um, I have a number. Take my, name, take my name out of the drawing, please. Um, I would like to see one of the people that did subscribe and ideally one of the last people that did hit the uh, the like button. And because you did what you what I asked you to do, I will deliver unquestionably powerful information that will save you a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of angst and a lot of money. I know how it's done. I've planned over thousands of estates, all with zero issues because of the interorum clause. Now, we're going to come out with more and more things, little snippets here and there, in order to entice you and encourage you to stay plugged in to TED Speaks. Because we're going to be talking about estate planning, and we don't make mistakes, folks. Can't. Okay, so I'm going to type a message for you guys here. Um, pick an, I'm going to tell you to pick a number here. You're going to have to wait a second until I put the rules in. You'll see it here. we got a lot of people in here, so this, this might get a little wild. We'll try this. Um, so here's the rules. You're going to pick a number. You have to hit the number on the on the head, the exact number, or um, you have to be the closest person below that number. 
So the first person to hit that number will win the coin. Um, if if we don't hit that number, it'll be the first person that gets the close or the person that gets closest to that number. If you go over, it disqualifies you. Okay, so we're gonna have fun with this. I don't really have any. Boy, Bob Barker ran the prices right, right? <laughs> yes. Um, you got to wait until I hit start, and then once I hit stop, we'll stop. And we're gonna go by what my phone um, says over here. So we'll look at my phone in a second. So on your mark, get set, go. And you'll see that there. So it's between one and 600. Silver um, bells, silver bells. It's Christmas time in the city. Anyway, this is my only dragon coin. You guys are still on my dragon coin. Don't you love silver? It's gorgeous. It's, I love it. It's really fun. It, it, it's real wealth. It's God's money. And it's what you should be holding right now. Never hold the currency of a warring, actually never hold the script of a warring government. Our government is at war. You're holding their script, which is the dollar. It's going away. We're the only country on the face of the planet as a generation that hasn't seen this. All their currencies, have, uh, all the countries have seen currencies shifts come and go. We have not. This is why it's going to take the majority of the people in the, in the U.S. completely by surprise. With all this preaching that we've been doing, we've only been able to get one half of one percent of you to get your funds into real money. Ninety nine point five percent of all the other people are holding their money here, but they're not even they don't even have a stock certificate with a QCIP number on it, a unique identifier. You see that? Yep. So if what that's taken away, they're selling the same share of stock without that identifier hundreds and hundreds of times. I mean, where does it end? So when you see the prices of things going up, it's not because it's become more uh, become worth more. Your currency that you're using to buy has become worth less because they keep creating more and more additional worthless units of currency into the pot. And it isn't going to go away. What's going to happen is all that purchasing power that's been pumped into this balloon, this, this big balloon, is going to shift into silver and gold. And because the mining ratios are not honest right now, the pricing isn't honest, the majority of the purchasing power is going to go into silver that's outside the, those little spheres inside yep. the big balloon. So if you're wondering why there's trouble in the housing market, the bond market, why there's trouble in credit cards, why people can't make uh, uh, house payments, why there are all kinds of other I financial issues going on, you got to look upstream. Doesn't that make sense? Look upstream. And if you look further enough upstream, you're going to see these two Goliaths. Austrian Monetary Economics has said, you know what, Keynesian? You're out of here. Your day is gone. And Kenzie wants to hold on, but we're ripping them out. When you rip this heart out of the hydra, it has tentacles all the way down to the toenails. And as soon as that comes out, we got to put the new currency right in, stitch up the patient. Off we go. 10 day recuperation period. We'll see what happens. All right. There you go. So I got to do a couple call outs real quick. Um, I just want to thank Amy Harrell. We'll show this up real quick here for becoming a new member. And then also long live coins. Um, gifted five memberships. So thank you, LLC, for yeah, that. Nice. So if you guys haven't joined the channel yet, which most of you haven't, um, hit that hit that thumbs up, hit the uh, subscribe button as well on the bell icon so you're, no you're notified about stuff. Go to Ted's channel and do that as well. In addition to that, I've got memberships. It starts at $2.99. Why do I have them? We do a Zoom call once a month. We're going to be announced, not announcing, but putting content out ahead of time. Um, we'll be coming out there and then we're also going to be doing a buying club that's, that we're in the process of putting together. So, and when I say a buying club, it's going to be stuff where you're going to find prices, um, below like SD and below, uh, hero bullion and places like that. It, it's not going to be everything. It's going to be like picking a particular item that we have. So it could be like a night, a, a 2014 silver Eagle, and we've got a bunch of tubes. So we're going to do what we can to get you guys better deals out there. It's it's not about competing with everybody else. It's about trying to help you stack a little bit more weight uh, and get better prices out there. And for some of you that can't buy monster boxes, but you can afford a tube or you might be able to afford a couple uh, coins, mm -hmm. I want to try to get you that that better price than having to um, you know to pay thirty one dollars. If I can get you twenty nine thirty dollars for an eagle, I, I'm going to do my best to try. All right, so I'm going to hit stop here. Um, well, actually, let, me, let me make one final comment here, okay? No more numbers, guys. We're good on the numbers. Okay. Is that the wealth that you hold today will be the wealth that your family will hold tomorrow. And if you can come out of this without with assets, which are silver, there's no counterparty risk, you're going to be just fine. Okay, so take the advice. It's, it's not risky. Like Jared just finished saying, it's not going to go to zero and it's already way underpriced 
Well, look at look at the U.S. debt clock. Take a look at how much additional currency is being added by the second. And take a look at the M2 money supply being withdrawn by the second. We showed you the M2 money supply has never been this low before. We showed you the graph coming way off the way off the charts. Folks, mm -hmm. we'll put all these up on our website, tedspeaks.net, so you can download them yourself. But, um, Jared, thank you very much, very much for having us on. Thank you, folks, for following along. Thank you for honoring my request to get the uh, the subscribers and uh, also to to say the likes as well. So we got 499. So 499 is the winning number. Mods, can you help me find this number? <laughs> Just Congratulations. So Congratulations. You'll enjoy it. If, that'll, if you keep that, it'll be in your family forever. And it'll be always worth money. Okay? worth It'll always have purchasing power to it. So that's a heck of a gift that you're giving away there, Jared. God bless you, buddy. Oh, 100, 100 bucks to my church today. I will, I will go do that as soon as we're off here. Wonderful. Okay, guys. We'll see you next time. All right, Ted. Thank you. I'm going to stay on here just to, to announce the winner real quick on this. Okay. Um, but you you can drop off if you'd like, or you can stay on for a minute. Uh, uh, I think I figured it out here. I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> there we go. All right. Um, all right, guys. So we're going to try to find this real fast here. I got to find the start. Okay, this is going to be hard to find. Let me see. Did, Mods, have you guys found a winner yet? Okay, give me 499. Who hit 499? Do we have a person on there yet? All right, let me see if I can find it on my phone over here. All right, guys. We got Tiger Stacker had 488. This is where a wheel comes in handy for those of you that follow Yankee. Um, all right. Oh, see, if you're on here and you see someone mention in the comments that they found it, then let me know. I've got bike contest at 444. Um, all right, we're going to go up from there. We've got 497 for Niels Han Dynasty right there. So let's see if anybody was higher. I'll leave him up until we find someone that's higher. We got a lot of people in here, so this just takes a minute. Thanks, thank you guys for hanging in here. And then, uh, if we can get once I hit that five thousand, we're going to do a really big party. There'll be a bunch of um, silver and gold. Hopefully, we can get a few uh, people to do some donations too. So we've got Raymond B. It looks like at four ninety nine. If anybody can um, let me know if there was another one before that, but that's the first one I see, right on the dot. So unless anybody refutes that, it's going to go to Raymond B. Raymond B., I just need you to send me an email, um, stackingsurfer at gmail.com. Um, I just need to know your mailing address, uh, any name you want me to put on the, the label for it. And um, I'll go ahead and get this out to you, which is really fun. This is a great coin. You're the dragon. That's this year. And this is um, from Australia. So um, this one is actually 2012, but it's still, you know, you're the dragon. Great coin. So congratulations. I want to thank everybody for jumping on real quick. Um, I don't normally do these on Sunday, but I felt this was at least a message that uh, is pertinent because we have a lot of things happening this week. Um, as always, I think it's important to uh, do your own homework um, and do some understanding of um, you know where things go. 
um, and all of that. So <laughs> people are trying to snake this coin, I think. <laughs> but I want to thank all of you guys for coming out. And until next time, peace out. And we'll see you at the 5,000 sub party. So if you guys have friends that are out there that do stacking, please reach out to them and um, and check with them. And we've got another new member from um, Chech Stacker. So thank you for, for jumping on as well. Um, anyway, guys, we're going to have a lot of fun. So talk to you soon. Have a wonderful Sabbath. Peace out.